scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So we consider that the mystery of wickedness. Why, why wickedness? Why will the devil just make an arm robber look at a little girl and just blow her head with gun? Is it... Did, is the devil going to eat her? What, I mean, what is the whole idea? The Bible says the whole world lieth where? Not in kindness. So don't let all those, those messages that deceive people and make them look like we live in a very friendly world. Don't trouble me. I won't trouble you. Whether you trouble Satan or not, he's determined to trouble you. And there is a reason. The reason is older than you. You must find out. Otherwise, you'll just be suffering something you inherited. The anger of the devil backdates before Adam. So find out what the true story is. And the Bible lets us know that there are certain stories that have not been revealed to men yet. He calls Satan that old serpent. He's not young. That old serpent. That means there was a story. The Bible says he was a murderer. Who did he kill? Where was the archive of that story? Where was it hidden in? I told you already that Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 are a long years apart. Are you getting that? So the Bible says in the beginning, what beginning? That mysterious beginning that only God can tell. Because even the angels were created. I told you that their material of creation was what? Light. The lightning that strikes when thunder comes, that was the material of their creation. That's why they can translate themselves as angels of light. Are you getting that now? So there was a long story that happened before Adam came. That was why immediately Adam came. The Bible says he told him, be fruitful, multiply. That's the part a lot of people like. We like fruitfulness, but the Bible says subdue. That means there was a hidden story. What will you subdue? How can God just bring man and say subdue? Hallelujah. Chronologically speaking, the Bible was not arranged accurately. Are you getting my point? Chronology means according to the occurrence of events. Because sandwiched between the beginning and the end of Genesis should be the book of Job. Are you getting that now? So Job began to speak. And talk about a lot of things that happened. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14 tells us, you, you don't need to write it, you can all get it in part one. I'm just doing a quick review. We're examining the mystery of wickedness. The Bible tells us that there was this angel. I told us the strata of the angelic, if you can remember, that I don't know if it was in this series or another teaching. If you remember, I told you that before the creation of man, the angels just below God himself, God meaning the Trinity, all right? The Trinity means what? Almighty God, not the Father. He never became Father until Jesus became Son. Are you getting my point? Hmm. So, the Almighty God, Eloha in Greek, one of the Trinity, the Godhead, and then the Word and the Spirit. That's their original name. Are you getting me? Adam never knew God as Father. Did he ever call him Father? Never. Are you getting my point? So, we must seek to have this understanding. Because I told you that if you do not have understanding, the devil will cheat you badly in this life. The purpose of revelation is to demystify Satan and make you see that he is a person who can be 
tamed Job was one man who tamed Satan until he gave a testimony before God that he could not do anything about his life. So a possibility exists that through revelation you can build a fortification around your life that will keep Satan absolutely powerless. And this is our goal with this teaching. Are you getting the point now? Praise God. So the mystery of wickedness. I explained to us how that Satan, look at me please. Do you know why Satan was called the most valued cherub that cover it? Let me explain to you. According to the angelic strata, after the seraphims, we have the cherubs. Are you following me now? And the cherubs were the closest to God. And I told you that there is a law in the spirit that when you see God, you are changed automatically. It has been a law that existed. Every time you behold God, you must change state. This is why Satan became more excellent than other angels. Because he ministered at the presence of God. Are you getting the point? This is why when Gabriel, who stands before God, appeared to Zechariah, when Zechariah doubted him, Gabriel made Zechariah dumb. He said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. Will there be so much falsehood in me that the presence of God cannot detect that I'm bringing you a word and you doubt it, become dumb? So there is, that's why the Bible says, as we behold him, we are what? There is a translation. Paul did not just create the law. Paul only revealed it to the body of Christ. It had been a spiritual law. Every time you behold God, you are changed. That's why, like Bishop said, if you are in church, a, a true church, and you are not changed, I don't care how hardened you are, something is wrong. Either with the man of God, or you, or both of you. You get the point? Because even the mountains that are harder than your heart, the Bible says they skip like lambs. So what is wrong with your own heart that it has refused to change, not just keep, change? Hallelujah. The mystery of wickedness. Very, very important. So I told you about the great rebellion. I told you Satan did not do his rebellion alone. No man plots a coup alone. There were many other spirits that followed him. Leviathan, Apollyon. All of these spirits together with a third of the angels, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelations. And when they fell, what happened? They fell and um, there was the, it was that judgment from that war that led to the darkness and the chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2. You get it now? So now the earth was dark, void, formless. Why? On account of the judgment that had happened. And then in Genesis 1 verse 3, Elohim now says, let us, he said, let there be light. I told you that light was not sunlight. Sunlight was created a few verses later. That light was the quality of himself that enables creation. In him was life and that life was the light of men. See it, John 1, and you read downwards, okay? There is no creation without light. So before God does any creation, he must have light. There are many believers without light who are trying to talk it into creation. It is the abundance. When there is no light, there is no creation. So when you say, be healed, be healed. Uh -uh. What is the light that sponsors that prophetic word? We already explained that, right? Remember our teaching on standing on the rock. Jesus, I mean, Peter got a revelation that Jesus was trying to communicate. He said, who do men say I am? And they say, they say you are Elias. Some say you are this and that. And he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter speaking by the spirit says, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. What did he say? Flesh and blood. That means revelation is not in the realm of flesh and blood. You can't get it with intellect and philosophy. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father. He says, thou art Peter. And upon this revelation you have caught, there is a structure. I will build my church. That means I will build my church upon the revelation that to get victory, they must first have the revelation before the manifestation. That was a rock. The rock was a structure and a revelation. So two men built houses. The houses were built. But one built it upon a revelation, a rock. Another built it upon nothing, sand. When the winds came, what happened? The one that understood why his house should stand, stood. And the one that did not know, fell. So I told you that every time you say be healed, demons will first check in the realm of the spirit what rock you are standing on. What revelation sponsors your audacity? If there is a revelation, they will respond. This is why people can come and say, 
I bless you. And the person doesn't get blessed. There is no rock. The person is standing on philosophies. It's not about talking. What rock do you stand upon? You see why many people go and confront the devil and come back with casualties. There is no rock. You don't stand before Pharaoh until you have met the burning bush. That becomes the revelation. Are you following me now? So, Satan um, had a very tragic time. Part two, we'll continue there. And then number three, our course curriculum was still there. Hey, we have to run. Number three, realms and jurisdiction of satanic operation. Listen, Satan is not omnipresent. Say it, one to go. Number two, Satan is not omnipotent. Three, Satan is not omniscient. What that means is that Satan cannot be everywhere. Listen, Satan has an organized demonic structure governed by fear. Satan cannot be at the same place everywhere. Are you getting my point? So that philosophy that makes us believe Satan is in your house, your family, let me tell you the truth. Satan is not everywhere. He operates with an arsenal of demons structured, led by fear. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point now? Satan does not know all things. If Satan knew all things, let me tell you something. Look at me. Pharaoh was a wizard. Are you getting me? There were ten spirits that were walking in Pharaoh. Ten spirits. Those were the spirits that each one of the plague was contending against. That's why after the tenth one, he had to let them go. Are you getting my point? There were ten. Pharaoh was a wizard. But with all his wizardry, Moses... The reason for the assassination of children were growing in his palace. Yet the demons could not detect it. Satan does not know all things. Are you getting me? Number three. Satan is not what? What? What does that mean now? Oh, that's the knowing all things. What's the other part? Omnipotent. Satan does not have all ability. Jesus already told us without contradiction, all power. How many? How many? All power. All authority. The word exousia. All delegated power. Remember, we ended last week's session powerfully with the revelation of the name. Isn't it? So, all power has been delegated. Is the Greek word exousia. The power of Athony, the capacity to function in the office of another. It has been given unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we touched on that. And then we, we ended last week's teaching with the weapons of victory. Exploring the spiritual arsenals that have been put at our disposal to maintain and enforce victory. Look at me. We, I did a small teaching, if you can remember, during the miracle service. And I told us why a lot of people, although this is what the word says, they may not see it in their lives. Because it's not just, how many of you have had that statement? Now, please don't be offended. How many of you have had that statement? God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Let me see your hands. Hmm. I wish it were true. But let me tell you straight to the point. Huh? I love you too much. No matter how you are looking at me, I'm going to say it. Praise the Lord. God said it. I believe it by understanding it. And I'm diligent enough to apply the principles that fulfill my part. And then God is committed to perform. That's the complete equation. Are you getting my point? Any Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for your salvation is an irresponsible Christianity. Let me explain what that means to you. Even what we call salvation that was freely done by Christ, you must respond and receive by your confession for it to become true. Is that true? Praise God. The book of Hebrews tells us very clearly that although God has put all things under the feet of man, he said we do not yet, that means experientially, we do not yet see all things under his feet. So it takes faith and the application of kingdom principles to make a present reality now. For instance, if somebody is on a wheelchair, listen, if somebody is on, just sit down, if somebody is on a wheelchair, 
Does it stop the fact that the Bible says no inhabitant in Zion shall say I am sick? Does it stop that fact? But experientially, what is his position? Please help me. Are you getting my point? So this is the difference between faith and foolishness. Are you getting my point? This guy, it is true that the Bible says that, but experientially, we have not seen the confirmation of the word in his life. So it takes faith and the application of the relevant kingdom principles to make his life now come under that reality to prove that God does not lie. Are you getting my point? So if you get that, then you'll be able to understand this teaching very, very well. Uh, we touched on the name very powerfully. And remember the example I, I made? Let me use it again. Sam, come. I told you the first revelation of the name is what? The name of any man brings his presence to the scene. I called him and his presence showed up. So when the Bible says, when we talk about the power of the name, the name of Jesus Christ brings his presence. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit was sent to answer every time the office of Jesus is invoked in the earth realm. He is the extension, Alos Paracletos, the one who will continue what Jesus was doing in the earth. Are you getting my point now? Remember that song? Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit to your work on earth done you see that so the holy spirit helps us to finish what jesus christ started jesus is still walking in the earth he is the head he has the body we are his hands his feet and so on and so forth okay so we stopped at the name i told you the name is not jesus remember that was a shocker for last week the name is not jesus i told you in Bible days, they didn't know anything as Jesus. The name was Jesus. You see that? The Hebrew was Jehoshua. That was it. Our Savior. That's where you get the word Joshua. That's the Hebrew version of Jesus. In Mexico, there are many people. There are footballers called Jesus. There are all kinds of people. Comedians, nasty unbelievers called Jesus. So, it's not J-E-S-U-S. Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says God has given him a name, an identity, an office. The office is not Jesus. I told you the office is Lord. L-O-R-D. That's the name that was given to him. Until he was exalted, he was not Lord. Experientially. This is why as great as Jesus was in the earth realm, his power did not work everywhere. There were certain places he prohibited people. He said, don't go there. Even when he sent the 70, he said, just go only to the Lordship of Israel because they were a covenant people. Remember when he healed the woman who was bound, he said, this woman being a daughter of Abraham, that means according to the Abrahamic blessing, indeed shall all the families be blessed. So through faithful Abraham, she qualifies. Although Jesus had not died, but she qualifies through the lineage of Abraham to be blessed. The Gentiles were not part of that blessing. Are you getting my point? So now when he resurrected, the Bible now tells us Christ has redeemed all of us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every man that hangs upon the tree, that's Galatians 3, that the blessings of Abraham was the blessing of Abraham, not cows, not goats. The blessings of Abraham is justification by faith that grants you access to receive what the Bible calls the blessing, and that's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, weapons of victory, we're supposed to continue from there. Um, but tonight, I want to just jump and move to the next topic, commanding victory. This is our last teaching service for the year. We'll, we'll still deal, there are many, there's the power of the name, there is the power of the blood. Hallelujah. There is the power of unity, there is the power of praise. These are the spiritual arsenals that have been given for us to maintain victory. We must explore them. I just want us to have something because next week is miracle service. And so we will not have time to do any long teaching. So commanding victory, spiritual laws and rules of engagement. We'll just touch on that next year by the grace of God. We'll have time to consider the blood. Because the revelation of the blood is very powerful. 
Remember our miracle service for October? Exodus 11 verse 1. Yet one plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and upon the nation of Egypt. After that, he will let you go. So, nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. But there was a mystery plague. When it was released, Pharaoh let them go by force. Hallelujah. The power of the blood. We will explain about the blood. Because there is a law in the spirit. Whenever you kill a man, his blood is permitted to speak against you. It's a law. Are you getting my point? You see why our villages are full of curses? You know how many innocent people they killed and buried and did all kinds of things? And many of us just got up in the middle of history and we are just receiving whiplashes we cannot account for. Because you came from wherever... And other people say, just, just assume it's not there. It's there. Look at it in your life. It's there. People are not getting married. People are dying. Say, no, I convinced myself it's not there. This thing is not working. Faith is not stupidity. Hallelujah. Hmm. So I'll tell you the mystery of the blood. Because blood in the realm of the spirit has a voice and it speaks in levels. That's why a herbalist can judge your case and say, this kind of case, go and bring a goat. Can't be chicken, no way. Go and bring a goat. You see that? Blood speaks. The blood of Abel spoke. That's not the only blood that has been speaking. I will show you when we talk about the mystery of the blood, how that, remember in the Bible, when Joshua had a covenant with certain people who lied to them, that they were from a far country, and he entered a covenant only to find out that they were deceived. The covenant was that they would not kill them. They would not touch any one of them. Is that true? Fast forward. Later on, the Bible tells us that Saul, the son of Kish, came and during his reign, they killed those people and the earth began to react. People started dying in Israel and God didn't do anything about it. They went to inquire of the Lord and the Lord said, uh -uh, you have broken something, covenant. This covenant thing, people trivialize. I will explain it to you. Do you love me? Yes. Promise you will never leave me. I promise. Bring your hand. And you just cut it. You are putting it. You say, I can't. Because of love, I will just drink it. See, people do careless and very ridiculous things in the name of love, emotion, affection. Hmm. Even God did not do anything about it. Listen to me. Do you know when they went to inquire of God? You know what God told them? We'll study it. I'm just giving you a preview. God told his covenant people to go and meet their enemies to find out what the penalty will be. It's in your Bible. And they went and met them. Do you know what they said? They said, bring the seven sons of Saul that we may slay all of them. And God said, you had them. People kept dying. Is it not in your Bible? Saul had to carry his seven children. They slew them one by one by one. When they slew the seventh one, everything stopped. You live in a world that is governed by principles. The Bible says it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why you can fast and pray over certain things. And the day you are rounding up the fasting, Satan comes to mock you on that thing again. Somebody has been pressing you. You say, I will engage. You prayed for 21 days. On the 21st day, you said, thank you, Jesus. You fell asleep. That They came again. And bastardize your 21 days of suffering. Because he said, I will give you keys, not a key. Keys, 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 principles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right, so let's, let's get to our teaching for tonight. Commanding victory. Let me do a quick review of something I explained the last time. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Mama, come, Sam, come, or any of it. Yeah. Okay, don't worry. One here, one here. I told us that there are two dimensions to understanding the kingdom. The first dimension is what? The person of Jesus. Everybody say the person of Jesus. Now, understanding the person of Jesus is what brings you into intimacy. You understand his nature. You understand his character. Are you getting my point? The second dimension is understanding the principles of the kingdom. Say after me, the principles of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for establishing your victory and keeping Satan where he belongs. So, that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ does not mean things will work for you automatically. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? 
The Bible says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. We'll go there shortly. It says, when you have those keys, you will bind and cast. The bind and casting is not necessarily saying, I bind or I cast. Uh -uh. There is something you do that equates binding. There is something you do that equates casting. Are you getting my point? Remember Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says, it shall come to pass in that day. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do and observe all that I commanded this day. It says, you shall be exalted on high above all nations. And this blessing shall come, follow you and overtake you. And then it begins to list them. Do and observe. Do, not think, not wish, not be emotional. Do and observe. Many believers, listen to me, many believers have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's true. They've given their hearts to the Lord. Are you following me now? They are saved. If they die, they are going to heaven. But they may never be able to walk in the victory of the kingdom because they do not understand the principles of the kingdom. Are you getting me? Now, there are certain unbelievers who have denied the person of Jesus Christ. But whether they agree or not, they are embracing the principles of the kingdom. And you see their taming life as if Satan does not exist. Are you getting me? So, this is the mistake we have in our churches. Especially soul winning churches. We just call the people, when I say soul winning, I mean ministries that are inclined towards the evangelistic as an office. Are you getting my point now? Every church should be a soul winning church. Now, they get people born again and just leave them at the door of the kingdom. And say, keep growing. They say, so what do we do? And I say, just continue. Are you not seeing us? All stood, that's what happened. Just continue. And the people do not, they, they don't know what to do. They get sick. They get broke. They, they become failures. Nothing works in their life. Eventually, they die miserable deaths. And then that's the end of it. But there is more to the kingdom. When you get born again and the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he doesn't come to make you a Pentecostal. He comes to begin to initiate you to the revelation, the mindset, the principles, the ideologies of the kingdom. So that when you comprehend, when you understand, and you can apply the principles of the kingdom, then you begin to see things work as the Bible says should work. And this is why we are here tonight. Are you getting my point? So, you may know Jesus Christ, you may have a personal relationship, but to what degree do you understand the principles of the kingdom? It is a combination of these two that we call spiritual growth. Are you getting my point? Spiritual growth is first the degree to which you have conformed experientially to the image and the character of God. And the, Im the degree to which you now understand the structure of the kingdom. The Bible says, with all thy getting... Get understanding. Bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are exploring the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Commanding victory. Let me now just talk briefly on discerning the, the presence of spirits. Please listen. What I'm sharing is very powerful. I want you to listen. Many people have called innocent people witches. Some of us have called our mothers. You just look at your mother because there's a mark on her face like this. Say, you're a witch. No way. You are a witch. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You just see somebody who doesn't smile. Even when others are smiling, the guy is like, they are like that. His face is, what do you want him to do about it? It doesn't mean he's angry. Just say, ah, now wow. You don't celebrate people's victory. You, you must be a witch. How do you... Wait, listen. This is very important. How do you discern? Oh, there are many things in my head to share. I've shared some, but I'm just putting them again. Let me just, let me just talk a bit about it. I feel the need. It's your desire that is pushing my spirit. See, there are different levels of the influence of Satan in the lives of people. I've taught that, but let me say it again. For those of us who do not understand. Possession is only the highest of the dimensions. But there are others. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point now? The first dimension of the oppression of Satan in the lives of people is called deception. 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 What is deception? Causing you to believe a lie. 
causing you to err without knowing. The Bible says, ye err not knowing the scripture. Hallelujah. Deception. Second is manipulation and control. Paul, look at me. Apostle Paul. Let me even put the apostle behind his name so that you know the person I'm talking about. Paul, who was a great apostle, began to communicate a lamentation in Romans chapter 7. He said, with my spirit, I serve the Lord. But in my body, I see another law walking in my members. Have you read that? So that the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing it. And the things I do not want to do, I find myself doing it. He said, oh wretched man that I am. This is Paul speaking. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? He was communicating a lamentation. Elijah was a very angry man. You get that? It wasn't just because he called fire. Elijah was a temperous person theologically. You do anything, you will burn for it at once. There is no second chance, no consideration, no negotiation. You are going to pay the price for it. It was that same spirit that the disciples had. So when Jesus was walking with them, they said, ah, you mean these people are speaking? You don't know that this is our emoji. Let's command fire. And Jesus said, don't you know the spirit that you are of? So that a man is born again does not mean he cannot be influenced by demons. Are you getting my point? Please, if you understand this, your deliverance will start at once. I remember arguing with a lady who argued with me. I, I believe she came from... We thank God for what God is doing around the body of Christ and we celebrate the efforts of every man of God. We truly, truly do. But let me tell you something. This lady was, I, as soon as she entered for counseling, I saw a demon looking at me. I said, sister, you need help. Before I said anything, this lady started arguing. No, 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 no. I'm this in Christ. I said, I know, I know. I'm not arguing. Can I help? I know. I am this and that. Before you say Jack Robinson, she was hitting my fridge, scattering everywhere. In the end of it, I said, all right, you are free. May the Lord bless you. For almost three days, this lady was sending me text messages. What happened? What happened? This is not to make you mock men of God. Archbishop Idahosa said, you only criticize people if you can do two times what they have done once. So this is not an issue of criticism. This is an issue of rising higher. Are you getting the point? We will not criticize them, but we will not do any loyalty or solidarity to remain in that realm. We must rise higher. Even in heaven, he said, come up hither. There is still a higher realm. Praise the Lord. Goodness, will we cover this thing today? So it is possible to see that someone may be born again, but is still influenced with demons. When somebody carries birth to us a brother, finish singing on on friday on after you finish singing then you now carry bottle and break it are you getting my point and say we'll do it today i don't care what it is go and tell apostle we'll do it let's tear ourselves into pieces listen 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 please uh, as you're laughing i appreciate the laughter but i want you to really understand i'm trying to communicate something very seriously it's not normal it's not normal please get this because, do you know what the fruit of the Spirit is? Do you believe the Bible? You believe the Bible. If you see an anomaly, it should tell you at every given time, every man is under the influence of some spirits. Either the Spirit of God or another strange spirit. And every man manifests the Spirit that is influencing him to the degree he has allowed to influence him. So it is possible for Cain and Abel to coexist in the same body. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to be at work in you to the degree to which you have permitted him. And another strange spirit will be working. Because it is not in the character of the spirit to usurp authority over a man. Demons do that. Are you getting my point? Please, do, do, are, are you getting me? Because I've seen a lot of people during miracle service, you are just standing singing. Praise Adonai. The next thing you just fall down. And at the end you are embarrassed. You are the pastor of your church. I said it the other time. People say, ah, pastor. What happened? And the person is now embarrassed. Saying, forget. This guy, the way I looked at that man preaching. Kai, that thing he's using is not of God. <laughs> My mother is alive. Go and ask her. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Three things biblically characterize the presence of demonic spirits in the lives of people. There are many things, but three things from the Bible. Number one, uncontrolled fear. Please write it. Very important. Many of you trivialize fear. I'm not talking of fear. If you take a little, I saw one of our little babies here. If you take that lady and off the light, she will cry. That's not the kind of fear I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fear that brings bondage. That is a spirit. Are you getting my point? Fear. Fear. God has not given us the spirit of. So fear is not just a phenomenon. It's the presence of a spirit. Every spirit reveals its atmosphere when it manifests. That's why when the spirit of Christ shows up in a place and there is no love, it was something else. You get my point? If at the end of this teaching, I leave you fearful, I used another spirit to speak to you. It doesn't matter whether I preach from the Bible or not. Every spirit should reveal the atmosphere and there is an atmosphere that characterizes this, the presence of God. Righteousness, it must be done according to kingdom principles. Peace, the word peace there is shalom and joy. You don't get joy, it's not the same thing as happiness. It's the Holy Spirit that gives men joy. Hallelujah. That's why you only rejoice in the Lord, not in money. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice because you have the ability. Hallelujah. Fear. Everybody say fear. fear. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse fear from my life. Let me explain what fear means to you. There are many of our family members that are afraid of taking steps. Afraid of getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Afraid of doing a lot of things. That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? The fear that stops you from tithing. Kai! God, you save 5,000, 500. How much is left? That one is a spirit. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know that fear is more dangerous. Listen. One spirit of fear can keep a congregation like this in the same level for decades. Fear. Fear that stops you from taking the steps that will bring the blessings of the Lord. Are you getting my point? Fear. Fear to break out of your comfort zone. Fear to take giant kingdom steps. That one is a spirit. God has not given us that kind of spirit. But of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Number two, disobedience. Listen, look at me. Uncontrolled, helpless disobedience in the life of a man is a classic Bible proof that you need help. What is disobedience? The inability to comply. The inability to take advantage of the grace of God and comply with the instructions and the terms of the spirit. The terms of the kingdom. That, that inability... It's not just about refusing. Many people who disobey do not want to. Is that true? They don't want to. Go and meet somebody who smokes. When he has finished everything and just sits down, you say, ah, John, why now? Say, oh boy, me too, I've, I've tried. Disobedience is a spirit. I'm going to show you from scripture. Ephesians 2 verse 2. How many disobedient believers do we have? Ephesians 2 verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. In, in which in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that walks in who? The sons of disobedience. When people walk in disobedience, perpetually, the extension of disobedience is what we call rebellion, stubbornness. All of these things are extensions of the manifestation of that spirit. So you tell the lady, sit down. Say, me. I must go out today. Have you seen people who all they want to know is the rule that has been set so that they will break it? They are like that. 
They just want to know what did they say we should not do. They say don't talk to these people. Say today, even if it's this fence. You see them around secondary schools. They just put a rule. They say from today, no jumping this fence. The guys will start looking at the person they know will break the rule. And you'll be laughing. He will put himself under pressure to disobey. It's a spirit. It's a spirit for God's sake. There are people whose head is as strong. You are talking to them. They are listening to you like this. Already they have disobeyed you before you finish talking. Will you do this? Yes. Will you sit down? Yes. As soon as you leave, they are doing some. It's a spirit. Many, please parents, listen. If you are a parent here, listen to me. This is the mystery behind the rebellion of many of our children. The protocol will bear me witness. Last week, a woman was tired of her child. I'm sure maybe she's here with the boy. Tired of her son and just carried the boy and said, let's go for counseling. When they entered, the woman sat down. She didn't waste time. No beating around the bush. This is the boy I brought. You know, look, when mothers get tired, fathers are logical. They wouldn't take steps first. They want to look. How is my reputation going to be affected? Mothers say, let's go. When they sat down, it was in, in less than five minutes, this boy was free, but it was a spirit. Hallelujah. Please, are you getting this now? This is not supposed to make you hate people. It is the biblical revelation that can help you to love people. See, agape functions from the standpoint of a revelation. You must know something higher than somebody's stupidity to love him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not this teaching about agape. They just say, just love. No, you can't just love. If you are stealing my thing, why should I love you? Until I have a higher revelation that is greater than your act. So it gives me the impetus to love even when you do not deserve. Are you getting my point? So we put pressure on people in church. They say, just love. What is there? Are you the first person they stole your thing? Ah, the person is saying, do you know the pain? I'm having right. Say just love. It's like that. It works for everybody. It's not like that. I'm telling you this night. Love is a function of a revelation. That's why the Bible says it has heights. It has depth. It has dimensions. There is a revelation that when you have, you can love even when people do not merit it. And they'll look at you and say, ah, ah, come. Why is Steve still loving this person? And you know that you are functioning from a light. That is higher than that which people see. It was on account of that. That Jesus looked at the people who were killing him. And said father forgive them. For they know not what they do. Look at the other two thieves that were hanging. What did they say? Same cross. What did they say? The other one even turned to Jesus. Said now wow. We are here. You are here. On the cross. Still not taking responsibility on the cross. He was on the cross. He stole. They caught two of them. They said, this night we are going to crucify two of you. Agreed, agreed. Now they are on the cross and he's blaming Jesus. Praise God. Disobedience. Everybody lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. The workings of disobedience leaves my life from today. See, you do not know how powerful the word of God is until your obedience is complete. Are you getting me? Our disobedience is what makes it look like God is not able to help us. Please believe what I'm saying. Hmm. Number three, classic manifestation of the presence of spirits, anger or what we call rage. Rage. Let's talk about this one moment. Anger. Everybody say anger. Please look at me. When you see someone or you have uncontrolled anger, there are people who can kill you when they are angry. Then later on say, ah, have you seen people like that? Some of our fathers especially. And I'll tell you why this anger thing is in our fathers. Because, you see, the beauty of any man's life is to make sure he's able to provide and protect his family. If you cannot provide and protect, you are not a man. doesn't matter how many children you can give birth to. You get the point? The Bible gives us what... It says any man that cannot cater, not any man that cannot give birth to children, whether male or female, that's not the issue. Protection and provision is God's biblical litmus test to test genuine manhood. You see that? 
protection, provision. That's why as a father, he models that. So if your life makes him look irresponsible, he's telling you there is a problem. Because any man that cannot cater for his family, the Bible says, is worse than an infidel. Are, are you getting my point now? So, anger. When you are frustrated by trying all the principles you know to try, and it's not bringing the result, and there are pressures. Do you know, statistically, some of you who are medical people will agree with me, there are more men with stroke and high blood pressure. Is that true? And blood-related diseases. When there is no school fees, when there is no this, the landlord is chasing the family and all of that away and running, everybody is running. The children look at the mother because they are usually closer to the mother. The mother now looks like the father. The father is angry because he can't look at anybody now. So he looks back at them in a way that will force them to shift their face. Oh, yeah, I heard what? Are you not seeing what we are doing? Frustration. That's why it's better to listen to this thing before you get married. Believe me. It's a big advantage big advantage are you following what i'm saying now many of us just find out oh i'm old kai time is going i must marry i give myself two months god if you are faithful god is saying calm down just listen to this series they are teaching you god i'm <laughs> see bishop is enjoying his marriage through through knowledge Hallelujah. So anger. Anger. Many people have refused to be promoted regardless of their fasting and prayer because of anger. Many relationships have scattered because of anger. One day the guy just looks at the lady, removes his belt, beats the living daylight out of her. And later on said, I just wanted to, to know that I was not myself. The lady said, that's the sign that I don't have any business. Who was there? I need to know the other person. You were not yourself. That means you cannot be yourself another day. I'm not doing. You see that? Or the lady sees the guy speaking and say, Hi, sweetheart, how are you? Maybe it's his younger sister. You just carry her seat. Turn your hand and say, I will lose and you will lose. These are spirits. Let me tell you how you know it's a spirit. At the end of it, the person regrets it. And sometimes the people are even shocked they cannot believe that they are the ones who did what they did hallelujah i remember one guy years ago the mom cursed him and she told him something she said you will stop stealing the day rat stop stealing <laughs> true story true story if it's just a story i'm forming i will tell you bring that guy out of the prison in two weeks he's going back they were used to him. When he comes, they say, pass, just go. There, nobody's asking any question. Because there was a spirit. Get the gravity of disobedience. Disobedience is not just refusing to comply to instruction. There is something that forces you to violate your own values. It's called the spirit of disobedience. Hallelujah. That's what can make a man of God collect bribe. They are forming a crusade and you say, ah, this, let's give bribe. And the person forgets he's a man of God. That's what can pressure somebody to do malpractice. After praying in tongues, he say, hi, this thing is too hot, too hot. Let me just, whoever can help me, I will talk to God later on. You see, it's the workings of, please get this very seriously. I used to trivialize disobedience till the day God opened my eyes. Because I will soon teach us that you are only ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Anger. How many of us have been suffering from anger? Anger. Deep rage. Anger. I remember a man who beat his son. Beat his son to an extent that wires enter the boy's body. Stripped the boy naked, oh, tied him, and was just allowing these demons to vent anger. And you know, at such times, the mother cannot come. She wants to talk, say, I will join you and this boy and tie two of you together and show you I prayed your dowry in full. You see, all these kind of statements. Say, I refuse anger. See, if this is all you need to get to finish the year, 
is enough. Are you getting me? Anger. Many of us, especially ladies, anger. Anger. You get angry at everything. Oh, it's pissing me off. Is this, this off? We have all kinds of satanic dictions that we have brought to explain this predicament. I'm telling you now, it's a spirit. Stop. You cannot be fighting with 20 people. The problem is you. If you don't humble yourself, why is it that everyone that comes around my life, we must fight? Something is wrong. Take responsibility tonight. And when it's time to pray, pray seriously and say enough is enough. Anger has cheated many of us. We have lost relationships. We have lost opportunities. There are many men of God that would have experienced increased thief. There are some people I would never invite to this pulpit even if their ministry is raising the dead. Because they would transfer all kinds of wrong spirits. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many, you see a beautiful Brought a sister, lovely lady, virtuous lady, but anger. Do you know what the Bible has to say about anger? It says it's better. How did he put it in the book of Proverbs? It's better to, to sleep. How many of you have tried sleeping on a roof? I've slept on speaker and amplifier, but I've not slept on a roof. To sleep on a roof than to stay with a woman who is full of rage. It's a terrible thing. Look at what the Bible used to compare that kind of spirit. Hallelujah. I know a woman, I was told that, I was told, not, not that I, I know her, I was told the story, that she took a um, knife and put red hot fire. I tell the truth, God is my witness. And she took that thing and pressed the ears of her child. Say, you are stubborn. I will give you this mark so that forever, but did it change the child? That's what will make the child, when he becomes 13 years, his first assignment is to buy a gun. He will buy one small locally made pistol. This world that hunters use. One day when the mother talks, you say, today, one of us will die. And you see, he will kill the mother. And people will not understand the story. They'll say, such a kind woman in church, bar because she was giving. You see, the terrible thing about anger is that it does not show itself everywhere. So some people will never agree that this person is suffering from. How can you call this our elder? This loving man. When he comes up, they say such a humble man. This guy has such a character and then he will kneel down as they are even talking. But this is the man that is killing his wife at home. That's why when you go and meet the pastor and say, pastor, there is trouble. The pastor says a lie. You are just being lousy. Anger is a spirit. It's a spirit. Are you getting my point? Other spirits, lost and the rest and all of this, they stem from these three things. Fear, disobedience, anger. That's why when you are casting out devils, notice every time they manifest, the first thing is anger. They just get angry. There is no joy with Satan, brothers and sisters. No joy at all. Forget that thing that musicians try to show you that hey, it's a nice thing, hell is this, they drop, it's, it's a lie. There is no joy. He cannot have it. Praise the Lord. John 14 verse 30. Let's look at one scripture. Are you getting blessed tonight? This, this teaching is a self-examination. Many of us, you are seeing that this is, the solu this is the problem. God is already showing you that this is it. Look at me. There is no man who has the spirit of love that will not have friends around him? Please, ladies, listen to me. When you find out, see, this is, this is what is responsible for many things. I know there are other factors, but there are, the Bible says, he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. And this, this thing is a strategy. It drives your destiny helpers away from you. I'm not just talking about relationship marriage. No, destiny helpers. This spirit of anger, this spirit of fear, this disobedience has cheated a lot of us. We have carried over seasons that should be seasons of breakthrough and liberty. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 verse 30. Hallelujah. Now this is a big key. We are talking about the laws of the spirit now. Everybody say the laws of the spirit. Or say the laws of victory. Let me call them the laws of victory. We're talking of commanding victory. 
This is a law in the spirit. It says, I will no longer talk much with you. Can I have it in Amplified? Is it possible? Amplified. I will not talk with you much. For the prince, the evil genius, the ruler of the world is coming. And he has no what? Claim. Aha. That means for everyone Satan afflicts, he claims. There is a claim. Are you getting what Jesus is saying? This is Jesus speaking now. He said, and he has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Therefore, he has no power. This is a big key. Please, I want to show you laws of victory right now. That means every time Satan looks at you, he's finding something that looks at like him in you. And if he finds it, it gives him access. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When, when demons oppress people, it's not to say the word of the Lord is not powerful. There must be something. And we're going to explore this. Say after me, the laws of victory. There must be something. And is that something we want to... There are three things. Three things that give Satan access, legal access over people. Number one, covenants. Please write it. Covenants. Are you getting blessed tonight? See, many of you, as you are hearing what I'm saying, I tell you, you will just be getting free at once. Because when you hear the word, the word is sent. It can heal and it can deliver. Say after me, covenant. Now, the word covenant is very important. Just leave that verse. Covenant is a very important word. I know we have bastardized it in the body of Christ. We just shout covenant, covenant. Let me tell you what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement. What did I call it? An agreement. A pact, a contract. Huh? Between two or more people. Based on clearly defined terms, a covenant, an agreement between two or more people, whether one is higher than the other, that's not the issue. Are you getting me? Based on what? Clearly defined terms. Notice my definition. An agreement between two or more people. You can't enter a covenant with yourself. Clearly defined terms with grave consequences when there is any violation. This is a standard definition. Notice the word agreement. Notice the word what? Clearly defined terms. Notice the word consequences when it is violated. If you understand this, you will see the reason. Please look at me. While certain geographical territories in Nigeria still have certain strongholds. Everybody says strongholds. There are places in this country that the men are generally irresponsible. Geographically speaking, true or false. You may have been exempted by light, but it does not stop the fact that that's... Are you getting me? Where I come from, the people drink. They drink a lot. Are you getting me? I know... Remember one time we went for crusade that they told us we went for crusade in a certain place and they say when they give birth to the baby, they dip alcohol and just touch it in his mouth small and the guy gets up a drunkard all his life he can go to Harvard and return back to Nigeria as a drunkard listen I want you to understand covenants so watch this our forefathers because when you understand the history of the continent of Africa I hope you know that traditional religion was before the coming of Christianity. Do you agree with me? Praise God. May I announce to you that every tribe, every tongue, every nation in Nigeria was and is still involved in some level of witchcraft. Say amen. So the issue of saying, you, you are from this place. Your people eat people as if you are innocent. Every body's forefather was an idol worshiper of some sort. I said the last time, it's just that others were more dedicated than others. Others were less as fair, but they were still involved. They were still involved. Are you getting this now? So that you have no right to point fingers at anybody. 
Say you are coming from this state. You are coming from this. We hear that your people do this. You are, no, you don't have that right. That authority is not given to you. Because everybody was an idol worshiper of some sort. Are you getting my point? Abraham was an idol worshiper when God called him. What could he have worshipped? Only idols. And when God called him, Jake, all of the people, the, as from Abraham, that was when they started understanding the person called Jehovah. Are you getting me now? He revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and they continued with that revelation until the word became flesh. Praise God. Now, what does that mean? That tells you that our forefathers went to the gods that they only knew. And they, on our, see, in the village, they understand covenant very well. Are you getting my point? They go and meet these strange spirits through mediums, through priests. Is that true? And they say, okay, protect our land from war. It started during war. Because from Bible days till today, they've been fighting. People have always been fighting. So because of fear, the kings and elder statesmen went on behalf of territories. Are you getting me now? None of us here is from America. So you cannot pretend not to understand what I'm saying. Are you getting my point? Don't give me that face as if me, I was born. You were born in a plane, no problem. But when I finish this explanation, you will know that you must stay and deal with certain things and conquer it. Nazareth, where Jesus came, had a spirit that was manifesting. Nothing good comes out from there. Nathaniel testified that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus had to exempt himself. Are you, are you getting my point? Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, they went to these gods to seek protection, to seek prosperity, to seek fruitfulness. And all of this, this is what Satan wants. Satan always wants you to come to him. Declare your loyalty and then he will give you. See, that a man is rich does not mean it's God that gave the money. Satan makes people rich. Are you hearing me? Satan... Satan took Jesus to a mountain. He said, look at all of... He showed him the glory of the world in a span of time. He said, I will give you if you bow down. All Satan wants is the bowing down part. And our elders carried their heads on our behalf. We were in their loins. We all bowed our heads to these devils and idols. And they said, we agree. Protect our children's children. Because that's all they knew. Don't get angry at our fathers. To them, they felt it was the best thing they were doing. Are you getting my point? That's why when they came for war, you won't see barricade, but you enter a city, people will start slapping you till you go out. The protection, the altars were speaking. You get the point? You see a man moving, nobody's protecting him. You try to touch him. Somebody somewhere because the covenant speaks. Are you getting my point? Ratified by blood. And it is renewed periodically. Usually, annually. People go, and that's the whole idea of many of what we call traditional festivals. It doesn't matter if they call a pastor to say opening prayer. No. That's not, the whole idea is a, what do I call it now? A, a revisiting of these altars. Please get this thing. We're talking of the laws of victory. You must understand this story. Now, down the line, Many of our parents left the village and they came to, they had the privilege to go and study in universities. They went abroad, you know. They did a lot of things and the missionaries came. That's why when the missionaries came to Nigeria, they brought the gospel but they died. The demon said, you are coming to save people. Now, they knew that Jesus was Lord but many of them did not understand the principles of the kingdom. As soon as they entered the land, they said, you want to stop this and that and that. The next thing, malaria just caught the man. They sent drugs from America, from everywhere. The man still died. And the priest who is responsible will just come out. Do you know how people in the village live old? 101, 114, no glasses. Ha ha, I remember you. He said, die now, die. The man won't die. In other words, I'm alive, I'm watching. Listen. 
you keep becoming an inconvenience to generations. Everybody must send you money. You started the trouble. The children grew, married, had their children. All kinds of things go on in the village. And the reason for all of this, listen, the reason for all of this is, I shared it the last time, transgenerational allegiance. Are you getting me? This is what Satan wants. What did I call it? transgenerational allegiance where one generation will now say we are the young people now we are bowing to you and you buy into that generation so before a child is giving birth to they are already covenanted to all kinds of spirits you you just get up and come and meet somebody i like this girl oh pray you won't pray be born again you won't be born again you just come the day you say i like her in the night you just see somebody you say be careful. The day you ever come near that lady, she's my wife or she's this and you wake up in the morning you say, ah, oh God, I won't do again, no. The kind of warning. Listen, many people think this thing is not real. Let me tell you this night, except you are pretending. This is what has happened to many people here. You know, the church is a place of we, 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 we allow suits like this to just make us lie over things. But tonight we're addressing issues. Some of you are going home after next week. This is the revelation you must take with this understanding. Some of you will be angry after today. And you say, so this is the mystery behind this lack of marriage in our family. Behind this, there are, there are cities that have what we call the cause of poverty. A professor will finish, retire, and go back to his village and be riding a bicycle. That's the covenant for, for violating this thing. There are many people like that. You see somebody who just leave London and say, I'm going back home. I, I like the village. Oh God, what are you looking for? Village that is room, 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 like shop. I like it. I'm still staying there. The person stays there until he dies. Education does not cast out demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Cologne and sure and smelling nice does not cast out demons. Good English does not cast out demons. I wish it did. Would have had less demons in our generation but they are still here. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus tonight it will break every chain break every chain break every chain it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing one more time with revelation from your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain, it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's just sing it one more time. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Satan comes to find expression. There must be something that he can hold on to. Number one is a covenant. Hear me. Listen. A possibility exists that you can become a victim of a covenant although you were not there when it was enacted. Were you there when Jesus died? 
Did you see him on the cross? And even if you go to Jerusalem and cry in front of a cross, you didn't see him. But by covenant, he brought you into it. And it's as real as standing there. To an extent that Paul can say, I have been crucified. Don't lie to us, Paul. Where were you? This is the power of a covenant. Footballers score and they say, we scored. Were you there? You understand covenant. So, here, here's how the Bible puts it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That means somebody can say, as for me and my house, we will serve this shrine. Is that true? Did they call everybody one by one to say, Benga, are you interested? He said, no. Lillian, are you interested? Somebody went on behalf of a nation and entered a covenant. This is the predicament of the nation of Africa. And the kind of gospels we are inheriting from America will not deliver us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not criticizing them. We salute them. But there's got to be more. This is Africa. A nation that God, a continent that God desires. The whole eyes of hell is upon Africa. They know. They know that saviors shall arise. This is the mountain. That's why there's multiplied mysterious sicknesses and the rest. I will show you, listen, I'm going to show you certain revelations and you will see why some sicknesses cannot be cured medically no matter how you try because they were not sicknesses in the first place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is somebody getting angry tonight? So, Satan must be free of whatever he can lay claim of in your life. Say covenant. Some of our parents, let's be honest, even went to an extent of inviting one baba. Tell the truth. Is that true? Some of you were small. You just saw somebody just come. They say, please give him a seat. Say, all right, everybody come. The next thing you saw something boiling, no fire. Ah. Who are you? Say, just sit down. Turn your back or remove your clothes. This one for husband. This one for prosperity. This one for that. Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, I want to, I can kneel down and beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you tell me that because you just said, I give my life to Jesus Christ, everything went. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Are you getting me? And I'm going to explain to you, that does not mean the Bible is, tells a lie when it says you are a new creation in Christ. I've taught you the structure of God's way of communicating. He speaks as though you have reached the end. It's not his fault. It's the way his nature is. He does not speak as if he's bounded by time. When he looked at Gideon, he said, Oh mighty man of value. How long did it take until he conquered before he walked in that experience? I'm not denying that the word of God says this about you. But brothers and sisters, it will take the experiential application of kingdom truths. Otherwise, you will see it in the world, but you may never get it. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? I saw certain things at work in my father that I always wondered. I was always fighting with my father growing up. That's how some of you are. You just see that. What is this resentment between your parents and you? It's almost as if you are rivals. You cannot explain. There is a story you do not know. This is what I'm explaining to you. It's a cry from altars. A man marries a wife. One day he gets up and just looks at her and everything about her irritates him. Everything irritates him. They go to counselors and they say, are you looking hot? You too, help yourself now. She says, okay, oh, go and buy the clothes. The day she's wearing, the man looks as if he didn't see anything. <laughs> you did this for me, don't be stupid. Because these things are spiritual things. Some of us here, this is God answering your question right now. You, every time something good is about to come to your life, you say, okay, daddy, help me. There is a small competition. You find out that that spirit rises again. That's the day your father comes back angry. And he says, where, where did you say you are going? Lagos for where? You are not going anywhere. Some of you, it was when you started coming for koinonia that the war in your family started. You were minding your business for as long as you were not serving God, you were not serving, doing anything. You, one kind of resentment you cannot explain, brothers and sisters. When the Bible says kingdom shall rise against kingdom, your question should be which kingdom? 
There are kingdoms. There are thrones. There are dominions. They still speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why they are speaking? You have violated the terms of that covenant. Because according to the covenant, the fraternity continues. Now, based on the knowledge of the gospel, all right, that you have had, you are now saying, I'm not bowing down to anything. Your parents told you, we are not going to any village, we are not doing anything again. These altars, as far as they are concerned, they have been destined to come and protect your family. Now they come and you are saying, Jesus Christ is going to protect my family. They say, okay, we'll see. So their goal is to frustrate whatever is not them so that you will return. You see it? That's why when things get bad, they say, this one that this leg is swelling up, you, where did you go, sir? You say, I was sitting down. They say, oh yeah, go home. <laughs> when you go home, the elder laughs. He gives you a word of knowledge as you are entering. He says, I knew you would come. What is he saying? I knew you would come. And when you come, he says, why are you pretending as if you were not born here? You went to London and it washed away what we are, your fathers have been doing. And you too, you will kneel down and say, Kai, I'm suffering this contract. Let me just do it. Do you know what? Satan hits you at your greatest point of desperation because at that point you can do anything. He won't disturb you until you get to 30 years. And then you say, are you really ready to marry? And some of our mothers will say, see, oh, let me tell you the truth. There's one story. I didn't tell you because you were very young. Just go to the village and marry in peace. Many pastors come and think that it's your caller that drives demons. I must marry this girl. She say, I have a bad history. I must still marry you. And the demons say, marry. Are you ready to take this? Yes, please. Hurry up. You just marry and you marry something else. The ministry dies. Everything dies. The woman is not bad, but a covenant is speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Who wrote it? When? Where did, what did they use to write the handwriting? And the Bible says, ordinance that spoke against us. There are ordinances that speak against people. I saw certain traits in my father. I hated it. But as I grew, I started finding it manifest in me. And I seem to be helpless about it. When I caught this revelation, I flogged it out with destiny. You know that song? I'll never let you go. It's not the song. It's what he said before the song I want to quote. He says, there comes a time. That's not what I'm saying. You think I cannot sing it? He says, there comes a time. Is that not what he said? In a man's life, when you have to do what? Just like Jacob and say, I won't let you go. This must be this your night. Don't celebrate Christmas the way you have been doing. There is no reason to celebrate when you have not dealt with what Jesus Christ came to solve. Many of us pamper Satan in our lives. You are not angry enough. I promise you, if you treat Satan as a gentleman, you will die like a chicken. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is, the Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You must get angry and say, enough. Come on now. Enough. The day my younger sister was going to write exam years ago, she collapsed in the exam hall. What happened? Nothing. Brothers and sisters, covenants are powerful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of you, when you were not in Christ, you enter different kinds of covenants. I want to say something that will surprise you and I apologize. I'm not a law and a religious person, but I just need to put this because I'm talking about covenant. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to tell you something that will surprise you. Do you know sex is a covenant? Look at me, please. Huh? Like I said, I'm not reminding you of your past or anything. No, I'm just bringing it to help you understand. Everybody say soul tie. Say it. Say soul tie. Listen. It's not about sex, sleeping with somebody. That's not what Satan is after. There is a law in the spirit that whoever you sleep with, you are one in the spirit. You become one with that person. Are you getting me? I know Nigerian films paint it very nice. They just show a romantic lady coming with her chest open and one guy like a sheep to the slaughter coming. But let me tell you the word of God right now, this night. 
that Christianity that you say, oh, I will serve God, but forget God is, let me tell you, sex is a covenant. Are you getting my point? And the trouble is, many of us, because of certain things, maybe our past lives or whatever it is, we got involved in all kinds of things. And then when we got born again, we just said, okay, everything is over. This is the reason why you will see a bishop who once was sleeping around or doing something. Are you following me now? Or a pastor. Or a, he was in the world drinking and smoking. And he just comes. And he says he's born again. When the guy says he's born again, he's standing and he's preaching. And one day, that altar strikes. Bam! And the person gets up. He's still a man of God. Though. The next thing, he's scouting around for ladies. This is what, this is the predicament many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through. Hallelujah. Covenants. Number two. What gives Satan access? We have to hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Have you gotten it? When, see, look at me. I'm one person who hates putting a law on people. When you impose laws on people, you make them religious. Give them the revelation behind it and they will comply accordingly. This is the mistake many parents are making. The moment the son gets to 13 years, they say, Samuel, come. They say, the day, hold your ears. The day I see any lady around you, that day, you will know I gave birth to you. And the guy said, what kind of embarrassment? You know, he's a teenager. He's feeling like he's a big boy. Ladies like him. See his mother falling his hand and embarrassing him. Hallelujah. And then they now preach. Don't sleep around. Don't smoke. So the person say, why? And they are not listening. Why? Because those who smoke, there is a name they give them. They are the big boys in the campuses. Why are you telling me not to smoke? Why are you telling me not to sleep around? If you explain the spiritual revelation, it will threaten you to obedience. You see it? If I ask you, sit down on this chair and remain there, after a while you will be wary. I didn't tell you why you sat down. But if I tell you there is a lion outside, you are free to go. But this is the best position. Will you see it? Even if the seat is pinching you, will you stand up? Because now I've given you a revelation to sponsor your patience. This is the religious thing we do in church. We come and meet people. Don't do this as if they wanted to do it. You are seeing a lady jumping from man to man and she's crying. She came to you for counseling. Say, man of God. I've been sleeping with everybody. You, you now join and slept with her again. And she went to another person. This is what a lot of people do because it's not an issue of psychology. This is an issue of spirits. Oh, let's pray. Father, I now release you in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. And the demon say, let's go. <laughs> because it's not by grammar through the greatness of thy power not your vocal composition through the greatness of your power you are going home listen god is sending many of us as saviors you are going back angry every time god wants to liberate a home a family he seeks for a man an agent an ambassador i know that there are some of you who are already doing it this thing is all, many of you right now, you are responsible. Do you know your prayer life is already, you are feeling the freedom already in the air in your family. It's just for some things to come in. And can I tell you, when it breaks, it has broken forever. For sure. This is the balance with deliverance. Many people make it look as if you should be in bondage when you are free. No, 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 no. When you are set free, for he who the son of man sets free is free indeed. But until then, you are in bondage indeed. Hallelujah. Goodness. Let's rush. So I've told you that, okay, covenant number two, yokes. Many of us don't know what a yoke is. 
A yoke is a self-imposed predicament. Self-imposed predicament by fraternizing with Satan. Personal self-imposed. Why self-imposed? Don't touch this. I must touch it and see what will happen. You touch it and your hand refuses to leave it. Yokes. Some of us, our stubbornness is what is responsible. The yokes on our lives are taller than us. The way we are standing like this. You are just standing alone. But the yokes that are on us because we are stubborn and rebellious to the ways of God. But tonight the Lord brings liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty. Liberty. Yokes. Hallelujah. Number three. Associations. Now, I know this one looks like a cool one. Wait till I finish explaining it. Associations. Look at me. Have you read the scripture that says what fellowship? Everybody say fellowship. Say koinonia. It didn't say what visitation. Are you getting me? So I'm not saying you, you will walk with unbelievers. The Bible did not say what visitation. It says what fellowship, conscious fraternity with wrong people. Let me tell you something. People carry spirits and they carry presence. Jonah entered the boat. People, their whole life damaged. He came with something else. The ark came into the house of Obed-Edom. And within that small time, Jacob came in with a blessing from his father. And he caused Laban to prosper. Personalities have spiritual implication. Don't let anybody just come and hop in and out of your house in the name of solidarity with your village people. Send them away if they are not ready to listen to the principles of the kingdom. Because when Rachel went, she carried her gods. That's what the Bible tells us. When Rachel went, she carried her gods. Jacob, the husband, but Rachel carried her small gods. Everybody say associations. The Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness? And what communion, two words, same words, koinonia. What communion has light got to do with darkness? It says come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Now, many of you, look at me. Many of you have inherited all kinds of demonic things because of wrong and careless associations. And you say it does not matter. You have friends that all they watch is pornography. You go to their, their houses, they are watching hardcore pornography. But because of your solidarity to them. Are you seeing? Your solidarity. I don't want them to call me holy, holy. I don't want them to call me this. And you get there. You can't watch those kinds of things. And still be yourself. Because those things are transference of spirits. Are you getting me? You have a mind. You have a brain. It has memories. It can replay. It can fast forward. So you go and watch all kinds of junks. And you come back. And you are wondering why every time you see every lady. You are feeling like sleeping with them. Something is wrong. And you come for koinonia like this. The water of the world washes you. And you get up and go back. There are many of us, we, we entered wrong relationships because of our friends. They came together and said, you said, don't fall our hand. This guy has been disturbing us. Let me tell you, straight to the point. If you are not bold to make a stand for Jesus Christ, you may not arrive at your destination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight's teaching may be hard, but let me tell you, God is speaking to us here. Break free from, from wrong associations. Love is a command. Association is not. It's not a commandment. Some of you still have bad friends. Terrible associations. You have, a, you have somebody who came to your room. Listen to me. And the guy said, sorry, oh, I don't have accommodation. Let me stay in your room. He's staying in your room. You come back in the evening and you see that a lady, he brought a lady in your room and he just laughed. He said, bros, bros, go and take fresh air now, I beg. And you are laughing. And I say, guy, you serve now. Wow, yeah, yeah, I'll come back after one hour. You see that? Associations. 
creating an atmosphere. I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere. Beans cannot grow on this carpet, true or false. You can't just throw beans and expect it to grow like that because the atmosphere is not conducive. Let me tell you the truth. There are many of us that need to go and destroy things that we are associating ourselves with. He told Gideon, go and destroy those things. There are, there are some of us, I've said it, our parents are born again, but there's one demonic bow and arrow or one kind of thing. It was, I'm not saying everything is bad, but some things were dedicated. You know it. You carry it and keep it there. Am I blessing you? I love you too much not to tell you the truth. Because this is what is responsible for the downfall of many families. Hallelujah. Families, listen. Those of us who are parents here, listen. Please let us help our children. Some of some families, even as see, this is not the thing of young people. There are families that are associating with wrong people. They are the ones that carry your father and mother to one so-called prophet and they did every kind of satanic thing. Your parents were working fine until some wrong associations took them to somebody. They didn't tell you. They went and they entered the covenant on your behalf. Associations. You must get out of it. Get out of it quick. Many of us who like joining clubs, Rotary Club is nice, but others that don't have names, I-40, you say, I'm joining too. What do you know it is? They say, when we join, you come and touch the table three times and you go. You too, you now carry your big head. You go and touch it three times. You see, let me tell you, don't, the Bible says, do not be unaware, ignorant of the devil's devices. Is the word stratomai, his methodology. In the name of association, Many of us have joined every kind of satanic sites online. I'm a member. I'm a this. I'm a that. They send you one envelope something. They say, okay, put the handkerchief here. Many of us, is associations that have made us to go and collect all kinds of things. Love portion. I hear they do it in Zaria City. When you rub it, it will make the, the guy. What if the guy is now more powerful than you? You don't know that he must have a repercussion. This is what you don't know. There's no free lunch with Satan. You will first eat. When you finish, you will tell you the bill. And you must pay. You must pay. So, when you say they gave me this, to make this guy, ladies, hear me. Anything God cannot do for you, let it not be done. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Husband can come from marine spirits. Hear me. Children can come from marine spirits. A lot of people, a lot of people are in error and derision. Gentlemen, look at me. Let me tell you something. If your quest for money makes you to join all kinds of demonic associations, it will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many clubs right now that are helping people to get money fast. When advent of, of everybody being a big boy, billionaire 23, millionaire 21, you too, you call me too, I must be before 28. Nothing is wrong with that except for the fact that when the quest for money becomes a desperate thing, they take you everywhere. They ask one wealthy man, they say, what is the secret of your prosperity? And he said something very scary. He didn't say, I read good business books. He said, I was in a certain place at a certain time. And in that certain place, there were other people like me. But I was the one who took the step they did not take. He said, that's the secret to his wealth. Will you follow that kind of person? What kind of scary description is that? You were at a certain place at a certain time. The fact that other people didn't join should tell you whatever they say they should do is scary. Sadiq Ibrahim, remember the gentleman that came here? They made him to sleep on a grave for three days. How many days? How many days? Many of us are willing to do it. He said three days is not better than 12 years. Do it. Do it. I remember 
Papa Akwami, they did. You remember one video we watched some years ago of one guy, one worry guy that used to be an armed robber. Eight years robbing people, nobody catches him. He won't run after when you are chasing him. You will just not see him. And what will happen to you will serve as a lesson. The next day you see him, you will leave him quietly. They can enter the bank. I mean it. They can. En- they don't rob 10,000, uh-uh, 10 million, 5 million, 100 million. And this guy himself, the covenant is see, There are many people, wealthy people who are under all kinds of covenants. Part of the agreement is you don't help your family members or you don't help yourself. They are your uncles. That's why you can be dying and they won't help you. They are not greedy. They are under oath. Are you getting me? That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. You see the sorrow part? That's what Satan cannot remove from your life. mysterious livings. Your father just comes and says, all right, I'm going to have a personal room right now. Your mother says, after how many years? He said, you had me. Go and find another room. And the guy stays alone. You wake up in the night, you see him standing like this. Ah, daddy, what is this? He said, go out, go out. Lock the door. <laughs> this man is sweating for hours. Why? He said, he must walk. This destiny must move forward. Be careful. What you call moving forward may be the biggest retrogression in your life. Whatever God does not give me, let me not get it. I won't get anything in this life. I prophesy into your life. May you not get anything in this life that will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am saying this because, Steve, right now people are under pressure to prove to others they are successful. Every young man graduates and he wants to show that within one year I bought a car, I bought this, and people are entering every kind of wrong. It's first associations that lead people into this thing. And they go and join some groups. They see a young man and say, You, how did you do it now? Now, how this one that you're to an extent that many of our pastor people are already following it now. Are you seeing that? Because the price for laboring genuinely. To get the true prosperity. The seasons of proving. Is very difficult and almost unbearable. So many people will prefer the shortcut. And that's Satan's ministry. To give you shortcut. Bow. You don't need to go to the cross. Just bow and take it now. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Mark 3.27. Let's hurry up. My spirit is fired up as I'm speaking because I know that this is what is responsible for the pain of many families. Many, many, many. This is the puzzle. Are you ready now? I want to share with you a powerful scripture. Everybody look up. How do you get out of these things? How do you get out of, how do you walk in the experiential victory? Number one, the Bible gives us another law. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then after he will plunder his house. So in every house there is a strong man. And the Bible says you cannot, the the barrier between you and the things you want to take is the presence of a strong man. The word strong there does not just, it means strong to the degree that your lack of knowledge permits him. Are you getting my point? You must get this key. I'm about to release a powerful key and we'll pray. It says you must first do what? Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. How do you bind the strong man? I will tell you. You don't bind the strong man by saying, strong man, I bind you. No. You bind the strong man through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. You bind the strong man through knowledge. And the application of that knowledge. First, before any prophetic utterance. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. One of the the most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible. Matthew. Please let's look at it quickly. Shiba kapara kosata. Matthew 16, 19. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Stop. So before we talk about binding and losing, what do we talk about first? Keys. 
Replace the word keys with principles. Ready? One to read. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. It is by the application of those principles you bind and lose. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is what you must do that binds Satan. There is what you must do that loses your blessings. Many people just say, I bind, I bind, I lose. There is a place for prophetic communication. But before you talk of any prophetic communication, there must be a revelation, knowledge. Hallelujah. Very important. These keys are the keys of knowledge. I will give you the principles. This is what I'm sharing with you. Principles. When you know these things, you can keep Satan where he belongs. As a ministry, we know some principles. And our success is not, in, it's not magic. You can be prosperous by knowing these principles. And your confidence will not be the prosperity, the, but the principles you know. Because there are principles that will be applied again and again. If you get blessed without knowing why you got blessed and how the blessing came, you will be afraid to lose it. This is why many people are not givers. Because they are not sure it will come again. Revelation makes you a giver. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say it again. Revelation. This is what we lack. Revelation. What are the principles? For instance, look at me. I want to tell you some principles very quickly. Every time you find out that every door around you is being closed, you are neglecting the law of honor, which is the principle for access. Are you seeing that? Honor is the key for access. When you dishonor people, there are doors closed towards you. Honor. Everybody say honor. If you want to receive the blessing of a father or a mother, what happens? Honor. And they will bless you. So he told his song, he said, go and bring me venison so that I will be pleased and I will bless you. Are you getting my point? Another principle. The principle of open heaven is tithing. It's in your Bible. Tithing is not the key for money. I've said this thing again and again. Tithing is not the law for money. Tithing does more than money. Tithing is the scriptural principle for open heavens. So that whatever is done under that open heaven prospers. It is when you are a faithful tither, then this scripture becomes real. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because you are now, if you give under a closed heaven, you are wasting your time. Are you getting me? There are many faithful givers who are not tithers. God is not just after money. God is after a pattern. He told Moses, he said, ensure that you build according to pattern. Open heavens. As a ministry, by the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira in tithe. We have been faithful to the latter. I told the finance department, it doesn't matter what collection we are collecting for what. God's 10% goes not forcefully, cheerfully out of revelation. And you will live as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Honor brings you access. I shared with you my story, how that God instructed me to go to Canaan land. I've shared the story. And I carried a seed and I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. They were here. I remember, I remember that time. I told them. I woke up in the morning to go and ease myself. And the Lord told me immediately, you are going. Without question, without arguing. Many of us, see, delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. He said, Abraham rose up early in the morning. And when I rose up, I went there. I went to go and sow my seed. Honor gives access. And when that happens, I came out and I was going to enter the car for the driver to take me back to the airport. Let me return. 
and the Lord told me, come out of the car. He said, kneel down on this ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And he said, from today, from today, the city is open up to you. So somebody will be seeing our messages going around. You do not know that there are keys. You see that? That's why when you criticize a man who is blessed of God, whether you are right or wrong, God will first punish you before addressing the issue. Please, are you learning something? Prayer and fasting. Listen. Prayer and fasting is the key for a vibrant anointed spiritual life. There is, there is the place of the word, but let me tell you, prayer, there are many lazy believers around who have explained away prayer and fasting because it's hard. They just kick it away and they expect you will never forget about spiritual power if you are not committed to prayer and fasting. Except you want to go and do what a lot of people are doing. But I tell you, you want authentic power prayer and fasting. I told you prayer and fasting. I know we say it solves many problems but from my Bible, prayer and so fasting only solves one problem. Unbelief. It exposes the atmosphere of your spirit and helps you to comprehend the reality of the person of God in a way that you can believe him more truly. Are you seeing that? So these are many principles many principles many there are many more praise is one of the dramatic principles for the instant intervention of god you know what this praise that many people trivialize is it just dancing that no praise is a mighty tool for biblical spiritual warfare read your bible it was at the shout the healer all the instruments and the voices and the walls of Jericho, they didn't just fall down, they sank. Praise. Are you getting it now? Very powerful spiritual principle. Hmm. Tonight, the Lord is going to set many people free. And many of us in turn will carry an anointing through this revelation and go back and set a lot of people free. Next year, hopefully, we will still talk about certain things. Very quickly, let me just share this. There are three revelations you must have to be free from all of these things. Three revelations. Number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. You must is compulsory. You must realize that you are only establishing something whose victory has been declared. Everybody say the finished work of Christ. Say it, the finished work of Christ. Because I must balance the part that I've been telling you now. A lot of us have been trained to understand as if let's just fight and see who will win. Uh-uh. Your fight is a fight of faith. And the fight of faith is taking the arsenals of the kingdom and enforcing the victory. Are you getting me? Say after me, Jesus died and conquered Satan. Conquered principalities. Conquered powers. And he has given me the victory. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says we are seated with Christ. Please believe this. You are seated with Christ. You must function from that platform. Are you getting me? You must function from that realm of truth. Although you are sick, you must believe that you are seated with Christ. The devil will say, if you are really seated with Christ, why has it not happened? You are going to apply the kingdom principles now and it will get him out. But it does not negate the fact that you are seated. Say, I'm seated with Christ. Far above say he has given me a name i am a partaker of his anointing of his spirit of his authority he said all power all authority has been given to me and he said as the father sent me with the same equipping so send i you 
I, I had a revelation. I had an understanding that brought me victory. He's saying, I send you with it. Go and do exploits with it. So number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. Number two, you must be diligent to apply the principles that cause the manifestation of whatever promise in scripture. You get the point? You must be diligent to apply. Every blessing in scripture has principles. It has your part that you will play. So it's not enough to say I've been seated with Christ. You must apply the principles. For you are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Just write it. We're out of time. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. You are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. When Satan cannot find anything of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final thing is to realize. Please realize. That God is with you. I know this looks like a very simple statement. But I wish it was that simple. Moses understood. He said, do not send us from here if your presence they just came out from Egypt and he knew that these gods will come after them until the presence of God drives them again. In your presence that's where I am strong. In your presence oh Lord my God in your presence that's where I belong. I am seeking your face and touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, oh God, in your presence, oh us will be delivered tonight once and for all. We cannot end this meeting. See, even if you have to go and set your family members free, you cannot set others free by being like them. You must first experience the liberty of the spirit. This is a very serious moment. Hallelujah. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance. Please rise up on your feet. Give this moment every seriousness. Give this moment every seriousness. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. Please sing this song from the depth of your heart. I won't go back. Say, Lord, I'm not going back the way I came. The way it used to be before your presence came and changed. Sing it two more times. I will go back. I will go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. One more time. I will go back. I will go back. Go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Hallelujah. Tonight's deliverance will be in this order. Number one, we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. Hallelujah. Let the devil know you mean business tonight. Instrumentalists, you walk with me. Hallelujah. After you pray in tongues, we are going to pray. The devil that will not let you go this night has not yet come into existence. Are you hearing me? You will shake off these shackles once and for all. Are you ready now? Go ahead and pray. Instrumentalists, go ahead. 
Please pray. This is the last teaching service for the year. You cannot. You can't go back the way you came. So go to Pekete, pray on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your loved ones. There's victory here tonight at a platter of gold. Enough is enough. Shackles of poverty, shackles of failure. Pray, pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of victory. Your long awaited victory. Is here at last, here at last in this last teaching service of the year. Say, Lord, I'm tired. Do it for the sake of your generation. Do it for the sake of your children. Do it. Pray. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. Do it for the sake of your children. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of the parents. Don't say it does not concern me. Be humble enough tonight. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't say it does not concern me. Be the savior that will arise from Zion. Rescue the perishing. Be that agent of change tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't just want to teach this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hear me, brothers and sisters. This is the explanation to many mystical things that are happening in our families. This is the explanation. There is a devil out there. And tonight, if you will only stand, you will be that savior. Please tonight, if it's for the sake of your loved ones, say, Lord, so this is why you brought me. I will pay any price to get out of it. Sister, this is the mystery behind your late marriage. This is the mystery behind the barrenness. This is the mystery behind untold hardships. Many families are going through untold hardships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you're going to pray in one or two minutes. See, let me tell you, the way some of you are praying, let me tell you straight to the point, you are not serious. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying pray till you shout the roof, but some of us are just standing and strolling around. We are not playing games here, believe me. This is for the sake of your destiny. We are here to help you. But like a hospital, no matter how we try to help you, you must cooperate. Me, I'm angry. Oh. I've been praying this. Are you getting me? You must experience this liberty. Some of you have been trusting God for job since you graduated. All you think is that hard? Let the devil live and see if the door will not open. Listen, hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. See, listen. You're going to pray. Right now, before I pray for you, see, 
Look up. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. I'm not just talking. There are things you know are happening in your life and your family. I'm not doubting the fact that you're a man of God. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray. Are you getting me? There are some of us is lost. There are some of us, whatever it is, you know that some of us is the cause of poverty. It's on our families and it's on everybody went to school. But they are living as if nobody has seen the four walls of a university. Let me tell you, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. If this is all we do tonight and you receive your liberty, this is pre-miracle service. Are you getting me? I'm just doing my job to help you here tonight. But brothers, I want you to pray. Are you listening to me? In the next five minutes, you're going to mention those limitations in your family and say, Lord, tonight, this night, right now, lift your voice and pray. Lord, the wickedness in my family must stop. Pray it. Lord, the hatred in my family must stop. The unfaithfulness in my family must stop. Pray it. The unfruitfulness. Please pray. Whatever makes doors to close when it gets to my door, it must stop tonight. Doors of marital delay, they must be opened. Pray. Whatever is responsible for my ministry not flourishing, pray, pray, pray. Ministry is not that hard. If you are struggling, something is wrong. Pray for your finances. Pray. Please pray. Mothers pray. Fathers pray. Pray. Gakoto prekete Ekroto sho prekete balaraba. Rakata tata. Rakoto prekete. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. This is business tonight. Confront gates. Confront gates. Confront gates. Le koto prekete. Ekreto shekete. It shall come to pass. The body shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke can be broken. The covenant can be broken. The cause can be broken. Jesus paid the price already. Our job is to enforce it. Shakata tata taba, rekoto brekete, ekrotos kopari araba, rokoto brekete. For the sake of your destiny, for the sake of your children, break some circles, break some circles. Enough is enough. Break some circles. Break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. Every covenant or every ordinance, Lord, that is speaking over my life, whether I know it or not, every covenant that has come tonight, I confront it willingly, consciously. Lift your voice. I break it. Every covenant, every spell, every enchantment. Pray. E prokoto prekete, le prokoto prosa, e prokoto prekete, 
every covenant oh god jesus died already i break it from my life I break it, oh God. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it. Every covenant that brings loss, that brings failure, that brings hardship, that brings delay, I break it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I like the spirit in this place. Hallelujah. One more prayer point before I minister to us. One more prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, wherever I have given the devil legal access, let the blood speak. Are you getting me? Whether it's my mistake, whether it's my carelessness, let the blood speak. Pray. Let the blood speak. The blood can speak above every other blood there's blood speaking in your village but there is the blood of the son of the living god it has a voice it speaks mercy it speaks freedom it speaks liberty Lord speak I plead the blood over my failures I plead the blood over my mistakes pray I plead the blood over my carelessness pray whatever gives Satan legal access in my life and my family let the blood speak Let the blood speak higher. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Tonight is your night of liberty. Let the blood speak. Satan cometh unto me and does not find anything of himself let the blood speak against altars against yokes against covenants the mystery of the blood is the one last card that satan cannot resist Hallelujah. 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 I'm ready to pray for you. See, some of you will be shocked tonight. Be, I know I, I, I prayed for people for, de, for deliverance and the rest. Many of you will be surprised tonight. We have few minutes, but we want it to be thorough. This one is not for your family. This one is for yourself. If you don't believe it, no problem. We are not offended. But for those who know that tonight must be this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to pray. I cannot tell you the things I have seen from the time we began to pray. Brothers and sisters, there are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking. Some of us, you know what I'm saying. But tonight, I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. This is what I hear my spirit. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. 
Alléluia. Father, whoever is delivered tonight, we put a barricade. It must be complete deliverance tonight. Deliverance with proofs that they will see in their lives. And my God, I pray that no one spirit will survive the fire that is about to be released in this building. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Take this moment very, very serious. I need all the instruments and everything that can come in. Hallelujah. Drama, follow them. I need the symbols. I'm going to pray. I see altars. See, tonight is going to be a ministration of fire. Many of you don't even know what fire. Fire is not just for falling down. Hear me. Fire is a mystery. It's the manifestation of the spirit that separates, that prunes, that delivers. I'm going to pray. Don't, don't worry about how many times you have fallen. Tonight, it will happen for real. Because you have prayed it and because you are tired and because God has commanded it. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. Once that happens, Steve, play. Everybody play. Hallelujah. Shakata balaraba. It's fire tonight. It will catch some of you. It will burn that chaff. Many of you will share stories. Hear me? We don't kill people. But I tell you, some people will have to give way this night for your destiny to be open. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I don't care what needs to be happened. What needs to happen tonight? The door of your destiny must open. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, because of your anointing. Let it break yokes. Let curses and yokes be broken. At the count of three. Are you ready now? Please shout it from the depth of your heart. One. Two. Three. Out. Out. Right now. I said altars on fire. I said altars fire. 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 Let the fire consume every altar. Let the fire consume every spell, every enchantment. Bring them out. Bring them out. I set it on fire now. I set it on fire. I command judgment. 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 Let the right hand of God be stretched right now over your life. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. Lord, we hear the chains falling. Lift your hands, please. We have to hurry up. We're out of time. Please lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray. It's a dangerous prayer. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous prayer. You just keep your hands lifted. I'm flowing as the Holy Ghost is. There are some of you here. I'm seeing you tied. This is what I'm seeing. Those people will be released right now. I'm seeing you tight. Don't just, just keep your hands. At the count of three, the power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing them tied. This is what I see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, anyone tied here, be released. One, two, 
Get ready now. Three. Receive it now. Receive it now. Be released. I release you now, 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 now. There are people tied. I release them. Go to to te 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 te. E can te con proscoma. Record to the gate. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. command judgment whoever has tied you and tied your destiny this night I release the fire of judgment upon them I hear the chains falling I hear the chains falling Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. We just have a few minutes. But lift your hands. God is delivering people from anger. Hear me? Anger. This thing called anger. When I pray for you, you will know it's a spirit and it's not normal. Hallelujah. Anger. Anger. Many ladies will be involved in this. Hallelujah. At the count of three, all I want you to shout is the name Jesus. Follow me, drummer. Hallelujah. Anger is a spirit. It's a wicked spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, my God, anyone under any influence of the spirit of anger, at the count of three, it will leave them forever. Are you ready now? One. Two, three. Go, 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 go. Every spirit, go, 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 go. God has not given us that spirit out of them. Come out, come out right now. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them right now. Come out of them right now. goes from your life hallelujah lift your hands quickly we want to pray against the spirit of fear many of you cannot take bold steps you are afraid of everything you are afraid of failure you are afraid of success you are afraid of marriage you are afraid to take steps you are afraid of starting a business what if I fail? That spirit must leave you this night. Lift your hands. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Are you ready now? Lord, at the count of three, as they shout that name, Jesus, I command fear. Fear is a dangerous spirit. It must leave you right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Fear, go, 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 go. I command fear everywhere. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Go, go. Come out of God's people right now. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I cast it now. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I set you free. 
the power of God is going through his body. That's what is making him uncomfortable. In the name of Jesus, be free now. Be free now. I command your temperature to go down. Your son is free. Take. Hallelujah. Someone came. I don't know what it is that has to do with your leg. Is it pain in your joints or something around your leg? There's someone you came. You are not a regular worshiper here. Who is that person? The Lord is showing me someone like that with that case. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Once we call your case, we don't want to keep people so long here. Once we call your case, please run out quickly. Please. What's wrong with you? Anytime I walk, it always pains me. Anytime you walk, it always pains you. Where? Yes. How long has it been? Since when I was small. Bring a chair for me, please, quickly. What's wrong with you? Pain. It's paining you. Yeah. How about you? Please bring three chairs quickly, quickly. Let's save time. Just turn it. No, 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 turn it. God is healing heart conditions now. God is healing heart conditions. Hold on. There's someone you have abnormal, what do they call it, medical students? Help me. Heartbeat. Irregular heartbeat. Irregular heartbeat. You? Okay, come. But there's another lady I'm seeing. She's taller than you. Irregular heartbeat. Sometimes it beats you even have to use your mouth. It's a very serious condition. Who is that? Please come quickly. Lord, we release now in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's wrong? Come, bring her. All right. Don't worry, I'm not saying you should pull up. Just, just remove your shoes, can you? God will give you a miracle here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please watch your screen inside and outside. Watch your screen. Can you see that if you are looking very well, can you see that one of these legs is shorter than the other? Can you see it, please? Now watch what the power of God will do. Sister, look at me. Open your eyes. Don't miss your miracle. All right? Tell us whether we are pretty. Are you seeing that one leg is shorter than the other? This is why the pain is coming. You will literally watch it grow right now. Are you ready? Watch it. In the name that is above all names. Watch this grow. Are you seeing it? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at, look at, look at what is happening to this leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you feel anything? Help out with the mic. What did you feel? Now try walking. Stamp it. Come. Get up and try to stamp it. Try to stamp it. Just stamp it. Try to stamp it. You still feel pains? You still feel pains? It's... No. Are you serious? Come on, celebrate a miracle. Come, come up here. Jump. Can you jump? Look at Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where's the other lady? While the ministers pray for you, this is a simple thing. I'm telling you, don't go around just pulling legs and disgrace yourself because that's what a lot of people do. You like this is not chambori. You disgrace yourself somewhere, someone injures you for nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God, sir. While they are praying so that we will save time, they'll pray for you. Hallelujah. This is what's wrong with you? A fracture on your leg. Which of them? How long? Seven months. Like seven months. Yes, sir. You've been working with this? 
Yes, you can't you. walk except you use it. Yes, sir. Look at me. My brother, I bring you life right now. I, look at me. Look at me. In the name that is above all names, I command a fractured leg to go. Let it join right now. See, look at what is happening to him. Look at what is happening to him. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the power of the Holy Ghost going through the leg in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, sir. Look at me. Can you walk? Look at me. Just start walking. Follow me. Look at this. Look at this. He came with crutches. Jump. Can you jump? Any pain? Fracture. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. Just got healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. A fractured leg. Hallelujah. If you're blind in one eye, what happened to you, sir? There was a who knows him? Who came here with him? Oh, you know him. He's a popular person. Is it true that he has been working with this crutch? Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Yahweh. I think we should give God some praise. Yahweh. Let's have the mic. Pastor Jake just prayed for him. What happened to you, sir? Make sure you don't tell lies. So, hallelujah. Actually, I, I had an accident. Listen, okay. The leg was paining me. The leg was paining you. Exactly. So, okay. When the man was, uh, when Pastor Jake prayed for you, it got perfect. It, it became perfect. Come up, come up, come up. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. Jump up. Look at this. Look at this. Yahweh, 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 Hallelujah. If your blood group is SS or AS, now is the time for it to change forever. Listen, I'm serious. I'm serious. Please make sure you believe. We are not joking here. Outside, I see that there is a mighty miracle that God will soon do outside. AS. Hallelujah. You can connect for any member of your family. Anyone in this place. By the power of the Holy Spirit. We command AS and SS to change now to AA. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I sense someone has been healed in the ear. Someone has been healed in the ear. Please check. You came here with ear problem. Someone has been healed in the ear. The Lord is showing me someone who has been healed in the ear. Hallelujah. Sorry? My uncle has been treated for the past two Your years. uncle? Okay, hold on. I'm a footballer. My uncle has a twist. So every time. Your uncle has twisted? Yeah. How long? Time, three years now. Every okay. Every time I'm running, the uncle will be making some. Just remove your shoe. Let me make contact with it. What's wrong with you, sir? Irregular heartbeat. Eh? Irregular heartbeat. Oh, the irregular heartbeat. Watch it leave you now. It's a devil. Go! By the power of the Holy Ghost. Check yourself. Breathe. In and out. Test yourself. Could you do this before? Breathe in. Could you do this before? Look at this. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. You're free. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, ushers, hold him. Let me just make contact with your feet. Hallelujah. Or Bishop Stan, just pray with him. He will pray with you. Check yourself. You will be healed. Hallelujah. So we can concentrate. I, I used to have, I play hockey. Okay, listen to this testimony. I play hockey. I'm a sportsman and 
over the years, I've been having this um, muzu pool. Muzu pool, okay. Yes, but outside there, I was feeling something. Outside there, his legs started shaking. And right now, there's no... Right now, he's healed. Power of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pain in the right hand. There's someone I'm seeing pain here. Very severe pain. You even cry. Who is that person? It's time for you to rejoice. Pain. Severe pain is like a shock in your right hand. Who is that person? Pain. No, no, no. Check yourself, please. Check yourself and if act on it. Come on, watch this. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? Watch a miracle happen. Could you do this before? Stamp it. Stamp it. Pastor Stanley just prayed for him. Hallelujah. The Lord perfect you in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you are celebrating what God is doing in this place? The hand. The Lord is showing me someone severe pain in your right hand. Please, when we call your case, just run out quickly. You are the one. Good evening. Thank you. Where is the pain in your right hand? How long has it been? It's up to five years. Now. Up to five years. What's wrong with it? What happened? I don't know. Just like that. Whenever I stretch it, I feel pain. In the Can you turn it round, up and down? Hold on. Can you do that before? Yes, but no. But you, you feel pain. Yes. All right, watch what will happen to you right now. You believe that? <laughs> It is such fun to see, such fun to see. Say can lose. Hallelujah. Look at me. I come in a name that is above every other name. And we challenge this devil. It goes. Look at me. I want you to wind it as fast as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at me. Sister. What happened to you? Could you do this before? Could you do this before? In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfects you by the power of the Holy Ghost. What's wrong with her? I used to have a pain here. And you, there was a time I wake up in the morning and I found this on my hand. What is this? I don't know. Alright, I'm going to pray for you. Does it pain you? Yes. Does it pain you? Yes. The pain will stop. He is able out of her now in the name of Jesus to use you and make a mighty woman of faith I'm seeing that I don't know what it is that this lady matched but she matched something that is demonic that's what is happening to her Jesus do this for your glory. Do this for your glory. I set you free. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free. I declare you free right now. Shalom. located your hands. Wow. 
God will give you a miracle now. I am the Lord that healed thee. I am the Lord your healer. I send the power of the Holy Ghost. Everyone who brought a sick person, you are a guest. Please come and line up quickly. You brought a sick person. You brought a sick person. Please just pick up. God is doing some. You brought a sick person. Now is the time. Please come out. Let's save time. You brought a sick person. Outside, you brought an invited guest who is sick. Please come quickly. Bring them to the front. What's wrong with you? Please, technical help us. Pain. Under my stomach, I also feel pains in my chest. Pains. I feel pains. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe he will set you free. Listen, sweetheart. What you see here are not stage managed miracles. Are you listening to me? You believe that? Please, can I have a lady? Just lay your hands on her chest. One of the watchers. Or is a demonic oppression you will rise up totally fine come come you're welcome come what's wrong with you what schizophrenia schizophrenia we, i think we should employ some medical people who is studying you're a serious medical student or you are a doctor eh? no we have doctors sir please come quickly quickly appreciate him Please, quick, 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 quick. Please hurry up, sir, and help us. Hallelujah. What is schizophrenia, sir? Schizophrenia is a psychiatric condition. Okay. That is characterized by hallucinations. You hear voices. You begin to see things that don't exist ah oh so it's like madness yes. like a psychosomatic condition you'll be free right now look at me my dear you believe that because devils he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free huh my dear hold my hands hold my hands can you look at me? Can you shout Jesus? Shout it as loud as you can. Jesus! Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That devil of schizophrenia. Go. In the name of Jesus. Who, who brought her? What happens to her? Okay, okay. It's going to leave her. Are you listening to me? It's going to leave her forever. All right. She sees things that are not there. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. And I'm seeing her waking up and shouting in the night. Yes, Is that true? Yes, sir. In the night, people are sleeping. She just wakes up and starts shouting. Yes, sir. That's what the Lord is showing me. The Lord set you free. Now, sister, look at me. It does not return to you again. And I also see the spirit of depression that has come upon you. The Lord sets you free. Look at me. Look at me. Run down there and run back. Run. I didn't say walk. Run. Run. Run like you're doing 100 meters relay. Do it one more time. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Now run back again. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Totally free. Totally free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sir, just please just spread yourself. Let's do that quickly. You just minister. We have to save time because everybody must be touched this night. Hallelujah. 
What's wrong with you, sister? There's this headache I've been having headache. over a year now, yes. And it keeps making me present. Go! In the name of Jesus. Okay. I used to excrete blood. You used to excrete blood. It ends right now. Put your hands on your stomach. That devil of darkness. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've been having this particular backache. For backache. Five. Lay your hands there. The power of God will hit you so hard. In the name of Jesus. Be totally hope. In the name of Jesus. They pray for you. Hallelujah. That's all. All right, let's have all the sick people come and line up quickly. Sick people, quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Heaven. Heaven. You're sick in your body, quickly. Oh, oh, oh. standing there I'd like you to be praying say Lord as these hands come upon me an end comes to it don't go back with your sickness those in the congregation be connecting some of you will be receiving the healing anointing in the name of Jesus go by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus
Hallelujah. Now, while we are praying, we'll soon be done. I like everyone inside and outside. If you know anybody in your family, listen, who is not feeling fine, or you brought the picture of anybody to connect or anything while we are praying, whether it's HIV or cancer, I like you to be connecting. Are you listening? The worshippers are they, they are worshiping. It's not just for the formality of it. They are creating an atmosphere. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? So I want you to connect. Are you listening to me? I want you to connect to what God is doing. Can you see me now? 
Can you see me now? Please hold this. Help me with a handkerchief, please. Can you see? Touch this. Touch this. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. That devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfect you. Give God a shout of praise. There is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sound of many waters, heaven and earth. family has experienced any kind of delay now is the time to let go any kind of delay no 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 no. hold on because of I know there are many people just go back to your seat but all of you who came out the five of you all of you come and hold your hands together all of you hold your hands together five of you but I'm going to pray for everybody look at me the power of God will touch you I sense a strong anointing are you listening to me? A strong anointing. Lord, let it move across right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Restoration for your family. Great restoration. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Now delay. Any kind of delay. No, no, no. Don't come out. Don't come out. Please, just stay where you are. Just lift your hands by faith. Because I see in the realm of the spirit two gates. Bring this lady. Ah, I see a lot of demonic things. Bakatata. Come out of this family now. In the name of Jesus. Every yoke of bondage. 
Lift your hands, everybody. Projects that are not completed by your family members. That devil of delay is a spirit. Hear me. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariot at the count of three the power of God as he's hitting you is touching your family members one two three like red oh God like red oh God every spirit of today go 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 and command God to be open, break through in the realm of the spirit. Everyone under the sound of my voice, let the doors of destiny be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now, if you are a student here, I'd like you to shout Amen. You will know why you are shouting Amen now because the Bible says. That when Daniel was tested with his colleagues, that there was a kind of spirit that was upon him, and he was ten times suddenly his his intelligent creation, his his capacity. Listen, friends, I told you that this is the year you will do fearful exploit in your academics. And if you are in 100 level, happy are you? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold on, leave her. Don't touch her. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, young lady. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the spirit. Let the power of God bring you forth. Let the power of God bring you forth. You will leave your seat and come forward by the influence of the Spirit. Let it happen right now. The contention of light. All those affected will come out by themselves. Leave them. All those affected, they will come out. The Holy Ghost will take you from your seat and bring you here in front. You will come out by the Spirit. Tap that lady. Just tap her. Come. All of them. No, they can't stand. The Holy Ghost will bring you right in front by, your, by himself. He will pick you from your seat. No matter how far you are, he will direct you and bring you in front. Leave them. Leave them. They will come by themselves. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. He will bring them to the front. He will bring them to the front by himself. It's a sign and a wonder of the sovereignty of Jesus. Look, ushers, leave that girl. She will come out by, them, by herself. If it's the Holy Ghost, he will bring her to the front. You will come out by the Holy Ghost to the front by yourself. It's the compelling power of the Holy Ghost and the castle in the spirit of
come out by the Holy Ghost. You run to the front now by the power of the Spirit. God will do a thorough work. Listen, I'm telling you, many of you will go back and see doors opening left and right. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. Sister, come out of her now in the name of Jesus. Be free. It's a year of supernatural exploit. I set you free now. Sister, I set you free. Because she's speaking a language in the realm of the spirit. And I hear what she's saying. The Lord is setting your family free. In the name that is above all names. For after the count of five, victory will be established. That's what the Lord tells me. One, two, Three, four, five. Please call this sister for me. Come, my dear. For God is not only going to set you free tonight, but God has begun a walk in your family. This is Kemi's sister, right? You will go back and see the dramatic things. The Lord is even restoring. I see financial restoration. Mighty financial restoration. There is a property your father wants to sell. Tell him not to sell it. There is a blessing coming. You just go and tell him. Are you listening to me? And for you, look at me. This is an evil spirit. Now be free. Now. Now. This is an evil spirit. Look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you listening to me? Your family, can me come. Both of you stand. God is bringing a major, major restoration to your family. You believe that? Look at me. I don't know what it is, but the Lord is saying I should tell you that the Lord can bless you anywhere. In Nigeria, in UK, or Canada. God just says I should tell you. Are you listening to me? Hold my hands. Lord, let this lady step into a new level of favor. Now, me for you look at me is a restorative breakthrough god is bringing what you are entering now you would have you are supposed to have entered it since but the lord is restoring to you in the name of jesus by the power of the holy ghost by the power and the influence of the spirit where's your friend where's your friend the guy that came come me there are three breakthroughs god is giving you do you understand one i will not talk about it but you know what i'm talking about the second is in the area of your business and that restoration is going to come through wisdom and knowledge are you listening to me wisdom and knowledge but look at me god wants your heart like never before do you understand business books 
can only do so much. Are you listening to me? God must take your heart before he blesses your hand. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I want to pray for you. Hold my hands in your mouth. Give him an impartation, oh God. Let him know he met the king of kings. Strong impartation. In the name of Jesus. Kataba, kataba, ladaba. I command freedom for you. I command breakthrough for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come. You came from a university campus. Not Zaria. Where are you? You came from a university camp. Not Ebi Uzaria. I'm seeing someone from a campus. Not ABU. Who is that person? Please. Please come my brother. Come quickly. Come and stand here. My brother, look at me. God is going to cause a hunger for him in your heart. Like never before. This is not the kind of prayer you expected me to pray for you. But you don't worry. Is that true? Sir, what did you expect? To prophesy to my life because I've been experiencing so many. Please, technical help us. So, uh, I, I'll be looking for God's direction in my ministry. Basically, my whole life Look is. Look at going. me, my brother. You, are, you just started ministry or something like that. Okay, you are going into ministry. Yes, sir. You leave ministry and pursue God. You are not equipped. You will die for nothing. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You just calm down. You need God. You need to experience the power of God. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. So that you don't jump into the error that people are having. However, yes, because you came here, yes, God will ignite a fire in you. Amen. It will first start with the spirit of prayer. Amen. It will fall on you. You will pray like a madman. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. And from there, God will begin to give you direction. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Hold my hands as tight as you can. <laughs> look at me. Just look at me. Lord, as you have shown me, ignite him with a fire. Fire upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. The spirit of prayer let it fall on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ where's the gentleman come from where foot mina mina again how many of you know that God is doing something in mina hold my hands my brother you came you will catch a fire look at me look at me you came with an hung with a hunger God will not leave you just lift one hand up you will feel literal fire coming upon this hand and it will flow through every part of your body. Lord, let it be done as you are showing me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus, that strong fire upon you, it flows from your hand, from your hand to every part of your body. And look at me, there is the spirit of leadership upon you. You are going back with a strong spirit of leadership. Are you listening to me? I'm hearing the name Rebecca. Sorry, we're out of time. We'll round up now. Rebecca. Rebecca. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca. Look at me. You are a student? No. Where are you? I'm in secondary school. You are in secondary school? Yes, sir. Will you be available if God uses you yes, sir. to bring a great revival in your school? Yes, sir. What school is that? Jama Secondary School. Jama Secondary School. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Say after me, Jesus, I'm available. Like Catherine Kuhlman, let your fire come upon me. Now look at me. Look at, look at the answer to the prayer. You will never be the same again. It's a mighty impartation. You are the same name. Come. You are a student of where? ABU. Yes. What department? English language. You believe God can do great things through you? Huh? Yes, sir. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Use me. Use me. Anoint me. Anoint me. All right, now you have the answer to your prayer. In the name of Jesus, ignite her. See, it's like fire in your tummy. 
is that of the spirit you will never recover from it never never in the name of Jesus foot me now okay why did you delay we have to hurry up please did you bring your prayer request all right quickly quickly your prayer request outside make sure your prayer request if you are outside please write it quickly and pass it just stay where you are to set free to win souls for the kingdom this and more may the Lord release upon you foot in uh, but you need to dedicate time for God uh, you don't pray you don't spend so much time in the word there's no other way to grow hmm? does it make sense to you what I'm saying but you came because you trust God to put a fire in you. Hold my hands, please. Lord, please put a fire in you. In the name of Jesus. That you will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Your prayer request, please quickly pass them. Just pass it to the last person. We have to be out of here. Just wait because I need to prophesy to the life of everyone. So do that quickly. Outside, even if you are just coming. Wherever you are, please get a paper. Help one another with papers, please. Hallelujah. Please, quick, 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 quick. You should have written this before now, but write it quickly. Please. Because Pastor Jax is going to speak and prophesy the fire of evangelism. Are you listening to me? And Bishop is going to come and pray and prophesy and release the spirit of prayer. These two things. Are you listening to me? We have to do that quickly. The Lord is showing me doors that are opening. This is what I'm seeing. See, I'm seeing this thing again and again. Doors. 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 Many of you don't know the value of an open door. close to Jessica. Come. Yes, you. Come. My dear, you standing. You believe God can use you in a mighty way. You want him to use you. Lift your hands where you are. Lord, release an anointing upon her that will cause her to be mightily used. The Lord is showing me visions. I see two eyes being put upon you eyes being put upon you Lord I pray that she will begin to see great and mighty things beginning from today in the name of Jesus my dear God wants you you believe that and he wants you this is not the issue of just run away from all these men that want to run around you they don't even know where they are going focus on Jesus Christ are you listening to me you need him first ladies what you need first in your life is not a man is Jesus if you know how to love and relate with Jesus a man will become an asset to your life are you listening to me hold on we'll soon pray that prayer that special prayer to send away some people out of your life and bring the people God has destined do you like that kind of prayer but you must be willing and obedient sister look at me you want me to pray that God will anoint you you want to pray good friends, an association of people who love God. Love is compulsory, but relationship is not. Are you listening to me? You mustn't relate with everybody. You have a very tender heart. Let them not take you for granted. Hold my hands. 
Jesus, please do something in her life, I pray. Please, give her an anointing. In the name of Jesus, bless her. Use her for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Steve Strings, please, can you come up and sing, There is none like you, your guitar. Hallelujah. While you bring the prayer request, Steve Strings will sing, There is none like you. I just sense that that's what we need. Do we have the prayer request? Please, quickly. Quickly. If, let's, let's have it, please. Pour it here quickly, quickly. All right, there's this. If you've not written, just write. We'll give you one minute quickly. This is not a ritual. God answers prayers, I'm telling you. My heart like you do I can search to all eternity, Lord And find there is none like you There's none like Jesus There is none like you There is none like you Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now listen I've been waiting for the Holy Ghost to signify it. Please, everybody, stand up. Jesus is calling many people tonight. Listen to me. Many of you have heard me preach. You've seen the miracles. There are many of you standing outside. And the Lord is speaking to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For many of you, you have been running away from God. Or you have been born again, but it's one leg inside, one leg outside. No one condemns you, but Jesus is calling you today. You came with your friend, but I like you. Don't let someone sitting by your left and right make you not to make this decision for Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way. There are many ways. He said, I am the truth. Hallelujah. I'm going to count one to ten. I like you to leave your seat and run out at that count of don't be ashamed the lord is talking to you many of you from the time i began to preach you have come to the end of the road as i count as i begin to count one to ten i like you to run and come out one two leave your seat and run inside and outside three four run out don't be ashamed of anybody five Outside, God is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Run out and come. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. Sing. Leave your seat. Forget about your friend. Forget about whoever you came with. We are waiting for you. Seven. Come to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Don't let your brother make you sit back there. There's a better life. There's a higher life. There's a greater life in Christ Jesus. Better than what you have experienced in eternity and in this No one. Jesus is still calling. Jesus is still calling. No other name. We have two more counts outside. Jesus is still speaking to a few people. Don't be ashamed of anyone. Leave your friend. Leave your relatives. Go on and come here. He's worthy of Nine. We are waiting for the last person. We are waiting for the last person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all of you in front. Just pray this prayer with me, okay? Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today, calling out to you. Please help me. Forgive me for my sins. Make me a new creature. Wash me with your blood. 
make me clean. I receive salvation in the name of Jesus. From today, I receive power to live a holy life in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for your people in the name of Jesus. Blessed Holy Spirit, you see their hearts. I ask that God, you uphold them with the power of your word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that Lord, everything that has pulled them thus far, Lord, has pulled them far from you. Everything that has held them back. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that Lord, you break them away from it in the name of Jesus. Give them strength to walk with you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ and you are forgiven by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put your, hold on, just put your hands together for them. We welcome you to the greatest, biggest, most victorious family. Not Koinonia, the kingdom of heaven. God's own kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Jesus brought all of you here. I want you to begin a great and practical work. Are you listening to me? Please. We love you. I want your salvation to be genuine. Don't just make it emotional and then go back. Uh -uh. Are you listening to me? A Christian's life must be backed up by a radical shift. You must leave the things you used to do. There's power. You must break away from ungodly associations. There must be a practical step. That's why the power is upon you. Hallelujah. Now, you do this for me very quick. Very quickly. The ushers are going to have your details. Are you listening to me? Tomorrow, you're going to have a special session with Pastor Jakes. He's going to talk to you. He's going to follow you up. And then we'll get all of you filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then you'll begin... Every time we get people born again, the moment we follow you up with some foundational teachings, once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you march straight to prayer band for one month. Hallelujah. You pray for one month. After that time, you'll be strong enough. We want our fruits to abide. Hallelujah. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Whatever has held you down, it leaves you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this be a new life for you. Please get up and follow the ushers. Please celebrate this harvest. Just follow the ushers. Don't worry, you will come back. Follow the ushers quickly. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, please look up. We, are, we don't have time. Pastor Jax is going to speak just in a few seconds and release upon us the spirit of soul winning. Are you listening to me? Everyone must become a soul winner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is going to be giving some of us a new heart. It starts with your heart, a compassionate heart. If you are willing and ready for this, the Lord will visit you with it. Some of you will literally feel like fire on your feet. That's what I'm sensing right now. A fire will come upon some of you, your feet. Thank you, blessed Lord. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Up your hands. Lift up your hands as we pray. Blessed Father, Abba Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I ask that God, you release from heaven. You release a fire from heaven, Lord. You release a fire upon your people from heaven. I ask in the name of Jesus, let there be a visitation. Let the presence of God come upon you. Let the fire of God come upon you. A passion for souls. In the name of Jesus, let fresh fire, let fresh fire be released upon your heart. Your heart begins to burn for souls and pants for it. You will not find rest. You will not find rest. In the name of Jesus, your tongue, the fire of God comes upon your tongue. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of God comes upon your feet. The Holy Spirit will lead you to, to speak the word, to speak the gospel, the angels of salvation. Lord, we pray that we release in the name of Jesus the four corners of this place. Let them be released. Let the oil and the mantle of evangelism be released. We pray. Lord, I pray that you grant your people vision for souls, a hunger for souls, for souls. Jesus! 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 Aprendo siba, rieto mi anta, in tush limante, risuminta, rionte, itapila, suminante, itrusigrasse, rista minta, sumelete, itrusiba la galapa. Lord, I pray that God this fire will burn continually. We pray to burn continually, Lord. We pray in their hearts. Our hearts will be on fire. Hallelujah. That's the spirit of evangelism. That's the spirit of evangelism. Now, Bishop is going to pray. I pray this will fall strong on people. The spirit of prayer. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Lord, the spirit of grace and supplication rest in the house in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit and the glory of the altar of the Lord rest upon your heart. Let your heart be yearn for His presence. Let the Lord be successful for your family. Well, I will turn to the Lord and take your family to the Lord. Well, I will turn and deliver. And the people of God from the house and the mouth of the enemy. For the Lord found you and loved you and intercepted you. Men and women of prayer, in the name of Jesus, may the authority of God rest upon your house that you will speak for him. 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 your hands here quickly if you dropped any prayer request here I'd like you to know it will be answered Lord we pray stretch your hands and say Lord go ahead and let's pray Lord do mighty things solve problems bring impossible miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus 
as we make contact with these requests in the name of the Lord Jesus prophetically wipe the tears of many in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Father we pray every prayer point here let it be met in the name of Jesus Lord release supernatural miracles for the sake of your glory in the name of Jesus Christ now lift your hands I want to prophesy this is the final thing and will go on. Please, if you came here, now is the time for you to receive something. Please, don't go back the same. Hallelujah. Listen. See, the apostolic anointing is not just talk. Are you listening to me? The apostolic anointing is an office. Are you, are you listening to me? It's an office. It's not just apostle. This no, 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 no. It's an office. No man works. The Bible says he gave unto some apostles. It's a position of authority. Are you listening to me? It's an office that is recognized in the spirit. It's an elect. It's not an issue of prayer and fasting. It's an office. God gives us this office to open up doors for others. It's an election by grace. And if you believe it tonight, you will step into a level of blessing. Lift your hands. Lord, if I be a servant of God, truly called into this apostolic office, my God, confirm this anointing upon me. Once again, I invoke the anointing that was given upon me when Jesus appeared to me. My God and my King, let there be a performance. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. I challenge thrones. I challenge dominions. I challenge offices. I stand in the anointing of this office. I compel every closed door over your life, over your academics, delaying marriage. I release you. I call your partner to come to you in the name of Jesus. I pray. I pray that the favor of God for he has granted unto me by grace my God and my King. I see it like water flowing from the ground. Let the favor of God sweep let it sweep across this congregation outside i prophesy favor i prophesy favor i prophesy favor if you can hear my voice receive favor receive favor in your academic favor in your financial favor in your relationship favor in the name of jesus hallelujah I want to prophesy speed upon your life and that of your family members in the name of Jesus before the next miracle service I prophesy run with the spirit of Elijah supernatural accomplishment exploit by the power of the Holy Ghost exploit 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 hallelujah I pray for every project whether in your life or your family building project capital project businesses in the name of Jesus God of heaven the one who is at work in this place I invoke by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be grace for completion receive it receive it outside receive it outside receive it I pray for your academics in the name 
that is above all names i want to release it upon you and if you will believe i release five points in the name of jesus i release it i release it i release first class in the name of the lord jesus supernatural intelligence every dull mind i command you be productive be intelligent every cause you cannot understand go back and challenge it now in the name of the lord hallelujah i pray against habit masturbation pornography whatever it is if it's a habit that is not of god this moment you have prayed you have fasted you have done everything you know to do but i come under the anointing in this office i command be free in the name of jesus be free in the name of jesus hallelujah i pray all those who are trusting god for life partners and for marriage listen please if you are not trusting god better put your hand we are not playing here we are very very serious if you are trusting god for i don't mean people coming around first and foremost any guy roaming around your life just to mess up your life i pray that tonight god will open your eyes in the name of jesus may god expose destiny destroyers this night may god connect you with the will of god for your life i command supernatural marriages for you and your loved ones in the name of jesus i command any kind of terminal disease and i see this the lord is showing me ladies many diseases infection whatever it is i cause it now to his root in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah i pray for your finances my god and my king if your word is true between now and the next miracle service if it is the god of heaven we serve you will receive a call if it is a god if it is god that we serve may you receive a call that will shock you i prophesy it i program your spirit to receive it in the name of jesus i hear a call it's a call it's a call that's what god told me it's a supernatural call receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah many of you who have been confused about your life especially men receive grace to sit down and be established in the name of jesus no more confusion the reason why you were born listen to me the reason why you were born between now and the next two weeks everyone here who does not know you are just roaming around the surface of the earth escorting men if God be God, may the reason why you were born be revealed to you in dreams, in visions, by prophetic encounters, by the revelation of the word. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for you. Lift your hands. There are certain anointings that God has put upon this house. Are you listening to me? Number one, the presence of God. I don't idolize this but it's true number two the favor of God the wisdom of God financial prosperity are you listening to me and such as we have my God and my king may it be released upon you now favor wisdom the presence of God the power of God the miraculous I activate the gift of the spirit now all across the building the gift of the spirit receive it gift of healing faith prophecy tongues interpretation of tongues i activate your spirit man visions visions i call for fivefold ministry fivefold offices 
let the apostolic arise let the prophetic arise let the evangelistic arise let the pastoral arise let teaching graces arise ba ta 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 ba 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 ko to posia upon ladies strange order of the prophetic strange order of the prophetic strange order strange order grace to see grace to hear grace to move in power hallelujah hallelujah we are rounding up please listen to me in closing all of you hear me inside and outside please listen we are training people to be men and women of character are you listening to me not just anointing it's not enough to have power those who are students you must have character this is the year you will demonstrate the character of the spirit be disciplined be dedicated you can't be flying around every party cannot be it hallelujah your christianity must bear fruit and everyone must witness it hallelujah so as you leave this place go and call all those people that cause you to walk in unrighteousness and let them know you have begun a new walk with god i'm telling you do it go and delete every ungodly song in your phone break all those cities and kick it out of your house you are either a christian or you are not hallelujah you are either a christian or you are not say i'm a man or a woman of character yes the character of the spirit must be at work in your life your conversation you cannot be speaking as if you are not born again and then when you come to church you say hallelujah no you must speak like a christian are you listening to me say amen, amen. inside and outside say amen. amen you must speak like a christian hallelujah you must act like a christian act like jesus is lord of your life anything cannot be it be disciplined you are a leader and be humble say i receive grace for humility if you are an arrogant person in this place i set you free from that spirit of arrogance be humble listen make sure by love you serve people are you listening to me the greater one in the kingdom gone are the days of all these men of god ah protocol for me uh -uh. the greater one is the one who can kneel down and serve are you listening to me take away that wrong mindset of ministry that has been given to people oh you are the woman of god you are the man of god bend down let your work speak for you let to wash the feet of others consider others better than yourself are you listening to me say i'm a christian if you are coming here for the first time let me prophesy into your life please leave your seat and come out inside and outside appreciate them very quickly please come out here quickly come out here quickly please clap for them they are coming ushers lead them to come to the front you are welcome give them a koinonia welcome we'll soon be out of this place now hallelujah quickly quickly thank you jesus come on koinonia will you appreciate them hallelujah 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 please keep coming we'll pray for you i want to thank every one of you for coming this is koinonia hallelujah especially for many of you who came all the way thank you so much for coming we appreciate you we receive you hallelujah we are happy we are proud of you we want to pray for you that this will be the beginning of unusual hunger for god that this will be the beginning of passion for the things of the spirit and that this will be the beginning of an unlimited life of breakthrough in the name of jesus saints of god stretch your hands towards them as we pray we are praying for you may the lord bless you we pray that god will make you better than you are in the name of jesus for those of you who have been healed and touched i pray that your miracle will remain in the name of the lord jesus hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words 
Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.